<laughs> I've been fighting since grade school. <laughs> There's millions of people watching at one time. And at the end of the day, I feel like this is what I was born to do. This is my death. The big nights, the big fights where the celebs come out. I know UFC just had all these people at the event. Oh, yeah. But, UFC be having TikTokers and influencers too. <laughs> but the ones at the, the boxing shows, I mean, it's like a different crowd. It's like chess versus checkers, you know? Or I'd like to see Francis fight you and Bare Knuckle. That'd be pretty ugly. I'm 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 cool with doing boxing gloves for, for both our sakes. <laughs> actual jiu-jitsu line. I'm supposed to get my brown belt. I just... You probably couldn't even find a gi that fit. I can wear it. <laughs> I get you. That's a big-ass gi, dude. Hey, take your gi off and cover up that side of the audience. <laughs> <laughs>
doing this or that. Like, I think Cormier actually does a great job. As yeah. Obviously, that's why he's there and he's sitting next to Joe Rogan. But, I mean, Cormier's, I mean, Cormier's uh, skills on the on the commentary are, like, way better than, you know, his fighting career was. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I mean, that's my number one trio. DC, Rogan, and uh, Anik. But I just don't, I don't care if... The commentary is not, you know. Anik is unbelievable I'm, as well. I'm He's unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, I need yeah. those reactions, bro. That's all I'm there for. The reactions. Right? I'm not there 100%. to be explained what the fuck is happening. Like I, I understand Absolutely. what's happening, and that's why I love Joe, right? Because there's like you just see this, like this. It's not fake. It's just a fucking pure passion for the sport and instant reactions that are that you can't you can't act. Yeah, I mean he gets fucking lit about it. That's all I want. Yeah. That's all I need. That's all I fucking need. But, yeah, going back to that thing, though, my biggest, like, what I was surprised about, probably Aspinall being the one to finish him like that that quick. Not that surprised, but damn. Um, But then McKenzie, the way she was standing there and trading with her, and actually hurt her, too. McKenzie will be back. She's young. She's always struck real, you know, it's ugly like that because she relies on the threat of the takedown all the time. You know, she gets in in those trades and she pulls her head back. She keeps her chin up. Dude, but throwing down with Andrade like that and hurting her, and Andrade being one of only like three, I think three UFC fighters that have knocked out people in three different UFC weight classes, it's a big deal. So yeah. I was impressed Di- regardless. Diego Lopez was fucking spectacular. Yeah, who is this guy, bro? Like he's Aspinall uh, is huge, dude. He's so them, yeah. big, dude. Thick. So yeah, big. And he ate that fucking shot. Like, dude, 100%. Sergei hit him with a Sergei's shot, bro. And Buddy, no one's eating 99% that. of the fucking heavyweight division is going out with that one. It stumbled him a little bit. But to be able to come back that quick and then knock him out with a one punch, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. Super impressive. Dan Margriotta's the new heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> <laughs> he knocked them both I, out. So, so tell me this. Because for me... I feel like the Stipe John yeah, fight now is just a little bit of mm-hmm. luster because now it's like, how do people not want to watch Tom and John at this point? Well, what, and he said on, on this podcast, he said himself, like, Stipe is the only fight that makes sense for me because it's legacy fight, essentially. Two goats I get going that. up against each other. And he goes, but I'd maybe, ooh, wait, we cut this out. I'll say we need to cut it out. We it. can. So he, he said, that he's done after Stipe, but he'd come back if there was someone that really made a statement and made him feel like he needed to come back and prove. Well, but I'm things change. John We've Jones. never. We, well, so that's John that's included. So fuck Stipe. It's got to be Tom now. I want to see but Tom. Not Tom necessarily. Not necessarily because Stipe didn't do anything to not make it into the fight. He yeah. was ready. So it's like. No one expected John to get an injury. Even John, he never saw that coming. No one saw that coming. John's always shown up and done business. But, you know, the thing is, people are going to be, you're on a waiting list now to see the best of all time fight. And yeah. it's whatever he wants. So it's probably going to still be Stipe. Everyone will still be excited about it. Um and if it's Aspinall stepping in, I mean, then it's even bigger. But I don't know if Aspinall's done enough because, yes, we knock, we watched Sergey knock a couple of people out. But, like, these guys come out of nowhere, you know. And I was actually going to – because of the um, Pareda, apparently. So I saw some stats. It's like, oh, two years he's been in and he's won two belts, two different weight classes. I mean, phenomenal stuff. But he also kickboxed, I don't know how many fights outside of the UFC for how many years before he came to the UFC. And I just, I was a little low-key jealous because I was like, damn, man, I was in the UFC for five or six years. And I I didn't get the opportunity to jump right into the top, start fighting those guys, and then get my get myself up there, even though I fought top 15 pretty much four out of the five or six years that I was there. And, um, you know, it just didn't, it didn't work out that way. It's like he did his growing outside of the UFC, then got to go to the UFC. It just makes me wonder if I'll be back there someday, uh, 
you know, and go straight to the top. I think I think yeah. you'll be back. So but here here was like the thing that goes into your point. So I brought up Gokan Saki yesterday on Twitter. I saw that. I, said, I thought he would be. I mean, you couldn't compare the two at the time because Perea hadn't come over to UFC. But when he came over, you know, it was like he had the same tenure that Perea did through glory and kickboxing, all this. But he got thrown to the wolves right away. And, like, even after the uh, De Silva fight, he gassed, like, halfway through the first round. I was like, oh, shit, this might not be. And then he gets the KO. Then, you know, Roundtree does what he does. But he didn't have what Perea had that you pretty much nobody else has had. When they, he came to the UFC, he already had a built-in story for a dominant champion that really didn't have contenders. So he got ushered in to win a couple, and you're right here fighting your mm. old rival. Is so here's a here's a future here's a future champ right here, Mister Joaquin Buckley. Buckley. There we go. What's up, good, bro? Shit, shit, shit. Money, Mike. You hear me? <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it, man. What I, it's good to see you again, bro. We met yes, uh, sir, a while a back. Yeah, been a minute, bro. What it was like UFC? What it was a title fight on that thing, though. When we met each other, I don't know when. It, it was when I fought. Um, it was when I fought either D Rod or maybe no, I fought Jeff. Mean. You, you fought was Means. A- Tim Means. Oh, it was Tim Means? That yeah, was you Tim was eating a hamburger week. on his ass, nigga, before weigh Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that shit was yeah, I definitely, I I definitely wasn't down. in great shape. Yeah, hey, my man was eating a burger talking about how your weight doing, nigga. How your weight? I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> and then I missed weight by four and a half pounds. But, <laughs> hey, but I wasn't in great shape for that one. But you used, at that time, you was fighting 185. And you recently had a fight at 185, and now you're back. Now you're down to 170. Yeah, I'm at 170 right now. 170, yeah. yeah, I, I didn't had two fights at 170. After you just Andre knocked Gallo. out that tall white boy at 185, <laughs> Jordan Wright. You talking about Jordan? Yes, I think so. <laughs> He's a goofy he looking, a, goofy yeah, looking bro. guy, <laughs> smart looking guy. He looks smart now, as hell. He looked like he could do some computer work. Right, right, right. He shouldn't have been in the cage. I will tell you that. But no, nah, he cool dude though. No, nah, he beat <laughs> yeah. some people pretty good. So you just you just gave him them hands, and uh, I mean the rest is history. I I like what you said recently. I'd love to see you get that Kevin Holland rematch, both at one seventy yeah. or one eighty five. What would you want yeah. it? Uh, I mean it'd be at one one seventy. He one seventy right now. Uh, but you know I'm calling him out, but he ain't saying shit about me. He just said he wanted to fight. Or not, he want to fight, you know, Jeff Neal. He want to fight everybody but me, you know. So I just find that crazy. And especially, ain't nobody want to fight you off no loss. So let me go ahead and give you a little win if you, if that's how you feel. Come on, get this easy dub. You yeah. a dog. I'd, I'd love to see you have that opportunity to uh, set that right for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just like I'm not fighting him just for that. Like, I, I realize that Kevin Holland is just the best opportunity right now because of his name. And, you know, but the the bonus is is just getting that, that dub back. That's all, you know. Like, you know, handing back that L. So, no, at the end sure. of the day, man, I'm, I'm looking at everything as, from a business perspective. Like, who is going to be able to push my name and who's going to be able to promote the fight as best as possible? I already know it's going to be Kevin and me. So that's going to be a type of fight where, you know, the UFC can see, like, potential of making, like, that a main event at the Apex or something. Yeah, you – um, real quick, uh, if we could see your whole face, man, you're such a superstar, bro. We need to let people know that we ain't here with the whole Joaquin Buckley. We're missing oh, the top – got the idea this way. We're missing the top half of your head. Yeah, yeah there we go. There guy. we go. Okay, I look good on my side. My bad, bro. I appreciate it. Joaquin, Joaquin, what are you You're weighing real. right now? Because you look fucking huge. Wait, so bro. I got a question. So then, all right, so Holland's the ideal next opponent. What do you do differently next time? Is there, like, a huge game change, or do you think you just got caught last time? Uh, I mean, yeah, we can all say we got caught. You know, that's definitely a possibility that I can say that. Uh, But the thing is the preparation. The preparation mm-hmm. and also just the experience now that I have with the UFC, when I, when I got into uh, that fight, whatever, I came off another fight at LFA on a week's notice. 
Uh, a lot of people don't know that I didn't have a team at the time. I was training by myself in Fort Spark, bro. And, you know, just training with some of the home homeboys that I had and, you know, hitting mitts and doing whatever just to stay in shape. Uh, so I feel like I have more preparation this time. I forgot I it was on that short of notice. Time. I remember you came yeah, from yeah, LFA week, on short week, notice. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, because he, he was already training for uh, Trevin Giles. Trevin Giles uh, passed out because he was a little scared. He was a little nervous. You know, yeah, that's a hard walk to make. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, when I got that shot, I got that opportunity. I came off a, off a win in the LFA. But like I said, I didn't have no team. I didn't have nothing behind me. So when I called out uh, to my management, I was like, hey, I ain't got nobody in my corner. They they just pulled a guy up named Kai Kamaka. Funny enough, we fought on the same card in LFA. So at least I was a little familiar with him. But, you know, I didn't really know my man's like that. So, But at least he gave, you know, came in and uh, did the job. And we able, was able to make the fight happen. Uh, but other than Kai, that, I think it's Kai experience Kamaka? now. You said Kai, Kai Kamaka? Kamaka? Yeah, who, who fighting Bellator now. Hey, yeah. Shout out to that yeah. dude. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You've learned a lot it. since then, man. You're a completely different fighter. I appreciate that. I have. I have. Yeah. Uh, like I said, bro, it's just getting that experience, man. Uh, I was too excited when I first got out there. Like, that's the dream, right? To make it to the UFC. And I'm coming off of Walgreens and shit, right? So, I'm just like, damn, I done made it. But instead of just thinking about it as another fight, regardless if it's in the UFC or not, because I don't care where you place a fight, a fight is a fight. No whether, no matter if you want the biggest promotion on the world or whether you in the backyard with it like Kimbo Slice back in the day. So I feel like as long as you, you treat the, the scenario the same, you're going to be all right. But a lot of guys make the moment too much. And, you know, they end up, you know, whatever. So sometimes the pressure can, can get to you, right? How do you let the pressure not get to you? Yeah, my boy Bags this, asked. Realize, uh, this is what I do. This is what I do. I've been doing this for the longest time. Like, so man, I've been fighting since grade school. So it's like, <laughs> so why why make anything else like like more than what it is? And I understand like there's millions of people watching at one time, and but at the end of the day, I feel like this is what I was born to do. Like this is my you know my destiny in order to show people you know that I'm, I'm one of the greatest. What the way fighters that's probably gonna be of this era potentially. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was gonna ask what uh, you gonna Joaquin, say, Mike, what, what, said? What, Yeah, what are you sitting uh what are you weighing right now? Because you look fucking huge. I don't know what yeah, I'm, I'm a little heavy right now, you know, niggas been eating. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you look big. No, I'm big. probably like one ninety five. One ninety five. All right. Yeah, I'm that's being generous. Cut. <laughs> that's a tough yeah, cut. Shit, man. Right? 25 pounds. Woo. Yeah, yeah, about twenty five pounds, yeah. And you know, yeah. it is a rough cut, but you know, when just how I train and how often I train. And when my diet is on point, it's not that hard of a cut. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just like when you got to get that last little two, three off, you do feel it. But, you know, it's all about, you know, the timing of it. So if the UFC was to call me, like, you know, on a week, like, bro, that's going to be difficult. But if I got yeah. time to know about it, then we can just work that that weight down and have no issues. Right. right. Yeah. Mike, what are you fighting at, 175? This one going back to 175. I still don't got to quite get to 70. I felt really strong at 85. I built it up. I, I forced myself to eat. I pumped a lot of weights. I tried to build strength. Um, but I still feel, I don't know, I feel like I might lose a little bit of strength uh, cutting to 175 this time because I built it all up. And then, uh, but I, I feel like I might have a lot of speed. So, that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, uh, Joaquin is like, yeah. you fought at 185 and you were super powerful for a lot of the people that you fought. I mean, everyone that you fought, you're, sh- you're a short, stocky. Uh, you're not that short, but you're shorter than mo- at 85. Yeah. You were short at 85. Yeah. You were short and you real stocky, real thick. And you got that Tyson brought the style. You know, we we low key brothers from another mother, bro, because yeah, we, we right fight now. similarly. <laughs> And, you know, do you feel like you were stronger when you fought at 85? Did you lose something when you started making these cuts to 75? Uh, I get exactly what you're saying. So, for me, at 185, the advantage was I didn't have to cut any weight. So, even on 195, uh, when when I'm just working out on a regular basis, I'm around 190. So, then mm-hmm. when you talk about a cut, that's only five pounds. So, that ain't really no mm-hmm. cut at all. So the advantages that I had at 185, I didn't have to focus on my weight, and I could just go out there. And I could take take the fight on a week's notice if need be. So that's why a lot of people, they be like, damn, bro, you've been hella active, right? We're having 11 fights within three years. 
you know, you got guys that had seven fights in seven years, which, only, you know, they fight once a year type stuff. So, but the reason why they only fight so often is because that weight cut might be very difficult depending mm. on what they walk around it. Uh, so they can only take a fight, you know, a certain amount of times. But for myself, though, I could just take a fight easily. But, you know, once you start fighting up, you know, a certain level, right, certain attributes like your strength, uh, your size, your length, everything starts to play a part because everybody's skilled at this level. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely when you talk about a ranked opponent. So, you know, at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, 170 probably going to be the biggest fit because, you know, not only will I have the speed, not only will I have the strength, I have conditioning on my side. I have the technique and it's not a lot of attributes that somebody else can have over me that they might be able to beat me with, you know, in my opinion, at 170. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, um, I got one. For for a for a forty year old white guy, what the hell is what does new mansa mean, man? You gotta explain uh, it to me. I feel you, I feel you shoot, even black folks don't know. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh New Mansa, I got that name from this guy named Mansa Musa. So he he from the Mali Empire, he was an emperor and he was like the richest man of all time over Elon, all the Steve Jobs, they had nothing on my man. So uh with 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 his wealth, uh he went across all of Africa, man, and he was just giving out gold. And he ended up crashing the what like pretty much the, the price of gold went down because of him because he was just handing it out to everybody so it was just crazy but uh that's who i got it from from mansa moose back in the day so i love that so that that's just that's a mentality thing so you're the new mansa yeah new mansa I'm, I'm trying to get money i'm trying to get new money that's what, let's call it like exactly. that right uh i feel like that's for dope. us right for us in mma we haven't reached that pinnacle yet not saying we can't but we haven't reached the you know the the type of uh the currency like uh, boxing has, right? Where you got guys from Muhammad Ali and uh, my man George Foreman who was able to get paid five million back in 1974, right? They got paid five million dollars each, and we can't get that in MMA, like in the UFC. And I find that kind of crazy. So my thing is, bro, I'm trying to put myself in position one day where I'm able to make that type of money and it not be like a weird thing or like uh, or anonymously, right? Like I feel like a lot of MMA fighters should be able to be able to eat that type of bread. You know, I see Money Mike over there, you know, he able to go from one place to the to the other, and I think that's beautiful. You know, I think that's where the game needs to be shifted again. I feel like, you know, for people just to be fighting for one promotion, you know, I think it's wild. I feel like we should be able to move, maneuver however we want to. So mm. how many fights you got left on your contract right now? Probably like one. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, that's offered. the price. They ain't offer none. They ain't offer none yet. <laughs> But you just yeah, who was awesome. it? Who was it? You just beat? You just beat some Morono. I watched the uh, fight. Good, a good really name. good. Good name, Alex Morono. They call him yeah. the Alex Morono. Yeah, it was a yeah, he showed yeah, toughness. Yeah, yeah. You hit him with some yeah. good shots. You yeah, controlled him on the ground, kept top position. He made it hard for you to get the ground and pound going, but yeah. you you dominated the fight, in my opinion. Um, I mean, shit. No, I mean, that, he was tough though. I ain't gonna lie, like he was tough. I, I really thought I was gonna get him out of there in the second round or at least the third, you know, and, and, and really create a great highlight. But he just stayed in there. He just he just was on survival mode the whole time. So now this is why I gotta change things up, even in my game plan. Sometimes these dudes are just too tough to just beat on. You know, sometimes you gotta use other methods to get them up out of there. So you know, I'm, I'm definitely got some, some new tactics for my next fight. <laughs> Sheesh, I, think I can't shit. wait to see it, man. That's gonna be yeah, great. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Morono's not crazy. easy to take out. Yeah. Mac, you got any uh, statistic drops? Uh, remember, I asked you about this. Uh, run us, run us down, Joaquin Buckley statistics, man. I know they got to be fantastic. I just got. I would have to look at. I mean, his oh man, they, I, I have to look at. They, they be doing me dirt. <laughs> it's it's weird the way they're compiled because like UFC because you have a all. voice. Yep. All right, so, so I got yeah, a question they, while Mac. They do me dirty, bro. I'm out here. Don't look at my shit. Don't look at my numbers, bro. <laughs> no, bro, you five, broke bro. you broke the numbers, bro. You broke the numbers when you kicked Impa Kasang and I. Uh, didn't fucking Kanye reference that shit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, weird, bro. Like, that mm -hmm. I broke all the records. I think it's one of the most yeah, watched nah, Instagram nah, nah. videos that, that pertain to fighting ever. I I think it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. one of those. Yeah. It's one of the most. It's like up it's there with the, the Showtime kick. You know what? Yeah. What were you were you planning that? Have you trained that kick? I mean, tell us. I think we're, Brain's gonna pull it up actually. Mm. Uh, 
I mean, but I mean, obviously, you caught the de- leg kick, you caught the body kick, and just. Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's see yeah, this so shit. So I definitely trained that kick, uh, and I and I trained it like a thousand times. I never performed it ever in the like actual sparring. Uh, I used to to touch the back with my with my rear leg, and it's called the two touch kick. Uh, Raymond Daniels mm-hmm. is famous for it, definitely doing it in uh, mm. doing kickboxing. And he knocked yep. you clean out, smooth like butter. And I seen that, I was like, bro, I would love to, you know, try that out. But it's not like, like I said, it's not like you can actually perform it in the spar room without being called an asshole. So, <laughs> so my biggest thing, I, I just used to work on the bag. And every single day, bro, I used to work on that move. And a lot of people were like, man, that kung fu shit ain't gonna work. And you know, years down the line, bro, you know, uh, 2020, bro, October what, seventh. Uh, End up throwing that kick, man, and, and knocking my man out, and, and becoming a viral sensation. It's it's Here's funny. What's you funny say. about that is is we just played that video, and he had to slow it down. He had to slow that video down to like half speed because it was so fast. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I ain't gonna lie to you. I knew I was like, if I'm gonna land it, I gotta be quick, right? So when he caught my foot and I turned to pivot, I made sure to snap my foot as fast as I could, bro. And that's probably mo- even with me kicking a thousand times on the back that's probably the hardest time i ever threw that kick right but unfortunately you, it was just on my man Emperor. Did, <laughs> yeah did it hurt your foot I, it did hurt my foot on my mama that's how you know it's a good one <laughs> i was flipping around that thing bro i'm like damn bro. that's how i know i hit my man pretty hard with that thing and oh man up. and he's 90, tough 90, he went out and won his next fight right oh he, yeah he did he choked he went to 170 choked buddy out i don't even know why the ufc let him go. You know, he's a great fight. He's actually fighting in the PFL, bro. About to get him a good bag. And I know he's going to win that million dollars. I'm already knowing. He just uh, KO'd somebody over there. We yeah. actually, we did yeah. an episode. We, he, uh, Ice Bags here have released some videos of the clips talking about when they was talking to me about, you know, if, if, if I believe that the UFC believes that, you know, what's happened for me and things like that is because of them. And I mean, I, you know, they uh, they think that, and some side of me has to agree with that, and the other side is like, well, I feel like I would have made it this way anyways in the sport of combat because it was destiny, like you said, just to be the world was going to see me doing, you know, what I was destined to do. But yeah. I feel like they're still pulling strings in all the other organizations. Like, what happens behind closed doors uh, is being allowed by the people yeah. who really took the UFC and jumped it up off the ground. I feel like they're behind. They they do talks with PFL. They do talks with uh, I mean, the boxing we, commission. Well, you know, you know, PKFC. <laughs> you can speak your mind, so I still still got to be careful with some things. But <laughs> but regardless, though, they the biggest engine, right? Uh, the UFC does make all the all the calls at the end of the day. Um, and you can speak your me, mind too. Don't let them. Oh, don't let oh, them no, put no, this and in this control look, on you. True. But yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, the people at the top like a five fight contract, and then you just you can be quiet again after like a five fight contract. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but regardless, though, I mean, for the UFC, and they know they the juggernaut of uh, the MMA game, or the fight game, or the combat game. Like ain't nobody touching uh, the UFC, and it's not gonna happen. But it's hard. It's long. hard to call it the juggernaut, though. It is hard it because is. How? How? because on certain nights, on certain nights, there's just other fights out there that are bigger than something that the UFC can put together, like a Tank Davis. I'm gonna tell you this right but now. Even though the UFC can put a trash ass card on, right? And boxing could put a little card on, and they have a big name. The UFC gonna get just as many numbers, bro. I'm telling you. Well, that's you don't even yes. Know the no, the people are gonna watch. watch. But look, but look though, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm saying. See, you're talking about the average casual uh, fan that is going to tune in because it's on TV and they already have ESPN Plus or whatever, uh-huh. right? But yeah. I'm talking about. The fights that get and now now both have this UFC boxing and I mean PFL hasn't really had it like that yet, but the celebrity nights, the big nights, the big fights where the celebs come out. I know UFC just had all these people at the event. Oh yeah, but, UFC be having TikTokers 
and influencers too. But the ones at the, the boxing shows, I mean, it's like a different crowd. It's like chess versus checkers, you know? Right, right. No, and you a hundred. I mean, but the thing is, and I'm glad you said that too, because you do bring up a good point. Uh, when you got like Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury, great example, right? Not even gonna talk about the result of the fight, but just all the people that showed up, right? And the people that tweeted about it, you got LeBron James, you got Lil Wayne, you got Eminem, you got all these celebrities. And for me, right, that's big money. That's Boy, Saudi money, boy. That's Saudi money, right? That's that oil money. That oil money. Right? And, uh, you know, and for me, it's just like, it's crazy that, 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 and you're right, though, because the casual, I don't know why they didn't tune in, but they only sold how many? What, 67,000? In America. That's it. That- it was and I don't know. Still, I don't know if those still, numbers are real. We don't know if those Tyson numbers are real. Fury and uh, Francis and Gano a big bag. Yeah, that's wild. And and you know the Saudis paid everybody to come out, right? Like, oh yeah, Roy got a Eminem. first class ticket, got paid to go out. Like, like they brought everybody out to watch that shit. They want. Man. They wanted the spectacle. You know what I mean? And they're willing exactly. to spend the money for it. But that's like we always talk about this, Joaquin. Like. Every every couple of shows, we kind of get into this, right? And it's like, we need, like you were saying, you were you were alluding to it earlier, and I don't want you to, to say anything, you know, about the UFC, but like, we need this cross-promotional stuff, right? Like, and Ganyu and Fury was huge for the industry in general. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, now we need, you know, we need John Jones and Ganyu, right? Like, we need these crossover fights that, A, get the fighters paid and yeah. piques the, the interest of everybody. Well, in my personal opinion, and the U- I mean, I don't know whether the UFC care about my little opinion. They, they don't think they think I know anything. But my thing is, I think the UFC didn't already put in their work, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They they didn't already, you know, laid the foundation where now every other little, whether it's PFL, the one, you know, belts are gone now. <laughs> you know, yeah. but they, U- they, they looking at the foundation of the UFC and be like, oh, we, we want to be like that, right? So the UFC doesn't have to work as hard as they used to. Because they getting money like clockwork, bro. And if it no, wasn't for them, no other promotion getting a billion dollars worth of revenue. Nope, None. right, right. You know what I'm saying? So the right. UFC not worried about trying to promote and do all this other shit because it's like I said, it's the engine, bro. It's fighters. I, it's more. I look at fighters, right? Like you should want to get that, right? The promotion not going to allow that to happen because that's how they keep making their money. But fighters, though. They, you know, we, we, we just comfortable being with the UFC because. Well, yeah, they, one person has to become bigger than the organization itself. And one has, and everything but he else part, that he they partners, do. Though. One has, but he partners, though. Yeah. <laughs> he getting a check every month. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The UFC is never going to lend out his platform. They don't have to. Like Joaquin said, they built this fucking house. It's like, okay, why the fuck do you need to invite now second party people to validate your own shit? You don't. Like, there's yeah, hardcore fans. People forget this all the time. When it comes to MMA, your market target audience is casuals. It's bringing in new people. It's not the hardcore. Yeah. That's why hardcores are always bitching. Oh, this fight, why the fuck would we get that? Well, because it's not about you. Yeah, but so, like, that's that's another point of what I was talking about is, like, if you got a pay-per-view card and you yeah. got, oh, you got this card, oh, it sold 1.2 million. Those 1.2 million buy everything. They buy every time. They buy those pay-per-views every time there's a fight on. But then you get a pay-per-view of, like, a the McGregor Mayweather shit that was 4.4 and they just barely made Pacquiao get paid. Uh, it was 4.6 million. They sold for that one. Like, I don't even know if I believe that. Ooh, ooh. Hey Mike, who clocking in at 1.2 million just like that? Who pay-per-view buys like All that? All the pay-per-views that Connor. the UFC does that the numbers release, they say that it's just 1.2 million for that's like an average that's for an like average. a Dustin. For like a Dustin Poirier. I don't know what the numbers be. You know they be lying. No, I'm not trying to call Dustin Poirier average. I'm just saying, like, on average, the UFCs, when they do a pay per view, they're doing at least a million buys, 1.2 buys. So, but then you see these ones that come out, some with boxing, some with UFC. We're talking 3 million buys. Those Mm -hmm. are the ones that make the differences. Right, right. But you only got a handful of people like that in boxing, which is still only even debatable yeah. then because now that Mayweather's gone, ain't nobody touching numbers like that. Not Javante, not Devin Haney, yeah. 
Tyson. Not uh-uh. uh, not Tyson. Tyson Fury. Tyson, Tyson Fury. Not Canelo. Tyson Wood. No, can- or, or Canelo. 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 Okay. Canelo's I got, not doing those numbers, dude. I got Canelo's the fucking the list right here. Canelo's the biggest name on the planet. He's not doing those well, numbers. Well, it's 2023. Everybody streams them shits now. That's <laughs> true. Oh, Everything. He have, you Everybody don't, still don't have... You don't have like a Canelo They should release guy. those numbers. Like they a- should release the numbers <laughs> like, oh, there was 700,000 streamers on this card, but there was 1.5 million streamers <laughs> on this card. They should release that shit. <laughs> they should. Hey, peep this. I got a list of pay-per-view vi- buys versus uh, boxing buys. I mean, this is like all time. So Mayweather Pacquiao, 4.6 million. That's fucking insane. That makes sense. Okay, Mayweather McGregor, right under it with 4.3. So Mayweather Pacquiao beat it by 300K. Then you have UFC 229, Khabib McGregor, 2.4 mil. De La Hoya versus Mayweather, 2.4 mil. I mean, that was in 07. Mayweather Canelo, then you have UFC 202, UFC 257, UFC 264, all McGregor fights. Mayweather Cotto, UFC 260, 246, McGregor Cerrone, another McGregor fight after that, 196, and then Triple G Canelo. Well, other like, than dude, McGregor, it's literally, damn. Mon- it's only McGregor, May- McGregor, Canelo, and Mayweather, bro. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yo, you only get those one of those. Face, those are the faces of combat, but I feel like Conor mm-hmm. McGregor... He could have been on some real Mayweather shit if he would have. But, you know, that, like I said, now that's the whole other conversation because as, as much as people want to say that Conor McGregor stole Mayweather's blueprint, he didn't because he's still attached to other people. Mm-hmm. I you know think about saying? this. Now, yeah, think about, think about this, though. Mayweather, I mean, uh, McGregor is the only one that I can think of that the UFC was like, yeah, yeah, go fight Mayweather and, and do a cross promotion. They That's hadn't let anybody else stupid. do that because they knew the fucking power that McGregor had in that scenario. You still right? see it. This motherfucker yeah, ain't fought. He ain't fought in three years. Everybody know and he, he got rid of USADA. Look, they he literally kicked right. USADA out, that bro. Man got a, that man got rid of a whole organization. <laughs> like, imagine being so powerful at <laughs> hey, your job. You show up and like, like, hey, 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 like, hey, like, hey, fucking out of here. You said I was like, man, we were just cool yesterday. What's <laughs> Not no more, bro. You pissed off our fucking employee of the month, bro. You're out. Hey, what the fuck? Yeah. That dude, oh, that's bro. Hey. Shout out McGregor, man. He gave me a face uh, off after I knocked Luke's absolutely. teeth out. Because they did release his, they released uh, McGregor. Whoever did it released McGregor's numbers. And that motherfucker was pulling in four and a half mil a fight since Aldo. He didn't even have a yeah. fucking belt then. Before, since Aldo, he was pulling yeah. four and a half from the UFC. Yeah. I mean, they was put. So, yet again, right, this engine, they took this one person. And like Dana said, he said, mother, you can talk, but if you can talk just as good, uh, if you can fight just as good as you talk, oh, we're going to create something great. Because that's one thing that that, that uh, the UFC understands, Dana White understands. It's like, unfortunately, you can't control somebody's success when it comes to the fight game, right? Right. You can try to milk them all the fighters you want to, but at the end of the day, they got to win and they got to be excited. And that's what Conor McGregor was able to do. And he was uh, able to amplify that, you know, on top of just, you know, getting that belt and going out there cross-promoting, getting with uh, Mayweather and boxing him. But the UFC seen him from the very beginning. My man Dana had a sit-down dinner with him before he was even signed with the UFC. If y'all didn't realize that man been watching Conor since the very beginning, people crazy. Why? Right? How? Who? He got you know what I mean? double tap and cage war. I'm saying why, who, how, how is he, how was he brought up with them because, before he even got to them? They had his plan. He was up. Up. fucking people up. Kind of out to Vegas. Had a sit yeah. down dinner with him when he won both. I got a funny story about this because before I made it, that, uh, before I went, and my tribute is the cage warriors that he wanted. Yeah, he was Cage Warriors. Right. So he not he was one forty five champ. Then he knocked out the one fifty five champ. Made it look fucking easy doing the made shit it he look does. Like money. That's what. Yeah, like bro, that fucking pull counter he hit him with and just looked at him go down. Like what the fuck? Double champ now. UFC was already on his radar, like Joaquin said. And so then they gave him the fight in Sweden against, I believe, uh, Marcus Brimage. He goes out there and fucking torches him. Like it, disgusting. Like these weird bolo uppercuts he was throwing back then. <laughs> the weird bolo around those bolo uppercuts. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? How he go like that? When he yeah, uppercut, I know. I got exactly sick. <laughs> Dude, I went to his next uh, eight fights. You are, you UFC, riding a little UFC. hard right now, Mac. Nope, nope. His you riding a little fucking, fucking hard right bro. now, bro. His, his Mac, come up is why you. 
You know what the fuck I'm drinking. Cause show us. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. He right. Is that a <laughs> problem, bro? <laughs> they love this shit. But dude, the fucking Man, Connor pull up was insane. Bro. I'm gonna drink Do 12. You, Don't worry about it. Do you have a vice, Joaquin? I got a what? A vice. What you mean? Like uh, like you like, uh, you like to drink, you like to smoke, you like to do uh, it all. <laughs> I, I like to do many things. I'm gonna leave it out. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You keep saying shit. He's like, yeah. We're all men here. <laughs> yeah, he likes kicking people in the head. That's yeah. one of his vice. Yeah, yeah. If I'm yeah. getting paid for it, yeah, I don't yeah. like fighting out in these streets. And if I do, I'm gonna have to dig in your pockets. You hear me? See how much you got on me. <laughs> that would be a sick post fight salad, dude. That would be yeah. fucking yeah. grabbing oh, in there. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta hey, watch out. Just... I sent you that video today. I uh, yeah, big facts, bro. It's my man, my man, we have, hey, we have hey, my man in the question. upper room now. You hear me? The upper room. <laughs> I, I, I hope he survived. I hope he survived. He definitely learned his lesson. Nah, bro, you can't, I don't, I don't care what the situation is. You know, once you put your hands on anybody, definitely when you talking about outside, anything go. You can't expect somebody yeah. to react the same way that you would react if somebody throw hands with you. Like, people ain't built like that. Of course. Especially where I'm at down here in St. Louis, like, you know, you got people all the time, bro, getting in a situation, whatever, that they can just control or they can get themselves out of by just speaking and communicate. But they'd rather just try to communicate with these, but motherfucker communicating with this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. so Mike, oh, yeah, I did, I did have fight. the answer to your question earlier when you were saying like, how did McGregor get you know, yeah, this this treatment right? And I texted Bryce Mitchell, and he said uh, <laughs> he said McGregor he said McGregor is Illuminati. Ah! Hey, yo, ask Bryce if he'd fight fucking um, hey, look. Lopez. You said oh, yeah, he's a fight, Bryce Mitchell. L- Lopez called out Mitchell, uh, Diego really? Lopez, who just that'd be, won. That'd be yeah. Lopez fight though, for real. Woo. It would be. It's a big jump, but dude, yeah. yeah what about that? that we match. got uh we got games and cards to go over. Let yeah, me bring up so- one quick thing, real quick. This was important. This is really important for the MMA community, or at least for me. You guys are familiar with Dale, the Dale Detroit. Burn. Yeah, see, you know where I'm going with this. Do you I know you're talking about Earnhardt Platinum? Nah, I don't even. No, the <laughs> motherfucker that does the videos, like Detroit Urban Self Defense. He went oh, that's his name. This motherfucker. Okay, so Joaquin, what? Be for real with us, bro. If we yeah. have to cut this, we can. He... Joaquin brought him in his corner to an UFC Apex fight, which you won with Dale in your corner. It's a meme photograph. I mean, what was? I was thought it just... Dale was real humble that week, though. Well, because he was around people that could really fuck someone up. No, because he was that. grateful to have the opportunity to work with Joaquin. Joaquin's a fucking I, I, superstar, a super athletic guy, and capable. And the boxing, the hands is crazy. So I think Dale was just happy to be involved, and well, someone was giving him respect. And That's then what I'm also, curious to hear. People don't realize, for me, yeah, I did the kick and all that shit right there. And people can say it was for clout or to try to get it. It was. It was help boost. The promotion, I was working with another guy who's heavily known Why as not? an influencer, right? Because people didn't realize, like, b- besides me being in that cage and me being watched by millions, when we walked outside that motherfucker, bro, when we was out there in Vegas, people were stepping to him, right? So I was just like, oh, okay, that I'm glad I brought this guy in because it was going to bring a lot of attention. But just to speak the real on Dale, my man been in the military. My man was a parachuter. Like, my man been about that life, right? So my thing is, how you gonna tell somebody out here bullshit when he didn't actually been trained in the military? He trains mm-hmm. actual police officers in Detroit. He actually goes out in community and does security for them, right? And mm-hmm. he tries his best to uh, not use any type of weapons, which I I, I call Dale crazy. I'm shit. I, 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 I he's got a sense of humor, with it. <laughs> right? He's but got a sense of humor about it. Mentality. He feel like that he can de-escalate any situation. With his words and with communicating, but if not, he feel like he can disarm them as well. So he said he hasn't been in that situation of to current date, but he said he'd be ready if anybody did try to pull up on him like that. So my my prayers always out to him, cause man, you know you got you got to be quick with it, boy. You got to be quick yeah. with it. They're good people though. I don't care what nobody say. 
Good. That's what I wanted to hear, man. Because you know he gets clowned on, and I wanted to hear straight from you why you brought him out. Fair enough, right there. Just validated right there. Uh, he yeah, seems like yeah, a I mean, good I don't guy. know why like, nobody's don't do that, right? We, you don't, matter of fact, my man Mike, perfect example. My man said, fuck paying anybody else. I'm going to bring my girl out with me, right? That was actually <laughs> big. I didn't think that was the best idea, but regardless, it blew up. She said, baby, what else you need? She putting the ice on your chest and shit. Yeah, and Mike just, I'm gonna just, I'm Bro, just gonna beat the shit out of him. I was dude. tired. I was tired as hell, too. I was like, hell, it actually, matter, though. the but 10 that memes. Moment gonna, that moment gonna live forever, fam, which is dope. You was the first person to really be on yeah. that type of shit. You know, because your girl ain't no fighter. Is she like, no, no fighter fighter? Is she, she, uh, she wrestled in high school. Okay, okay. <laughs> she actually wrestled, but. I mean, she's and still, she Latina. I, wouldn't I mean, she's her. definitely not a fighter at all. She's right. she's a little firecracker, yeah. but like, you know, that's because I got her and, back now. Maybe I don't know, but right. <laughs> you. But my <laughs> my thing is, my thing is like, why not use that opportunity? Because we get what three corners, right? You don't need that many motherfucking yeah. coaches to tell you something. Use that third one, and and if you if you are. Knowing somebody of influence, and boy, I'm straight spending some game too. If you knowing somebody influence, th- throw them in to help promote right. your shit. No, for sure. I mean, right, now man. my team uh, has been more solid. Uh, those I had three UFC fights with my girl in the corner. Uh, I won the first one with her, and then I had a couple decisions didn't go my way. Uh, mm-hmm. I also in the Tim Means fight, I had somebody pay me to be there. Uh, he is some random dude I didn't know at all, and he was like kind of weird. Like he didn't want to hang out with us all week at all, and like yeah, bro, you should have fucked with us, bro. On on, on the real, bro, you should have fucked with us in our team, bro. No, nah, I feel we, you, but I was in a, I was in a different right place. Got the weight down, bro. <laughs> I, I was in a different place at that time. Now my boxing coach, my boxing coach JT, uh, technique boxing. Um, he, he's a great dude. I've known him for like 10, 15 years. And, uh, we finally started working together when I got out of the UFC, uh, Mm -hmm. and, and went to the Triller and then the BKFC. So, I mean, he's been phenomenal and I take, uh, you know, I try to take good care of him. I ain't gonna lie to you though, fam. If I can ask you personally, what was that transition like, bro? As you got cut from the UFC, you know, a lot of motherfuckers being devastated. They be crying in the car and shit. You know what I mean? And they gonna cry in the car. Like, what was your transition after? Like, you know, the UFC was like, yeah, we ain't trying to, trying to book well, no more fights. Found, that's a good question. I found myself. Um, I came to a point, like on the Joe Rogan podcast, I said, you know, I stopped making excuses, and um, I took a hard look in the mirror and told my, you know, I, I, I started taking the constructive criticism or you know some of the bullshit that I might see online that might be true somehow or in some way and. Uh, I started looking at it from a different perspective. And um, and to be honest, MMA and boxing are different sports. Um, I've always just wanted to punch and just fight. I've always loved boxing, but I, I my boxing got me so far in MMA. I just knocked out all these MMA fighters, kind of like what Jake Paul was doing. And mm-hmm. I had the hands, and then... And then at the deeper I got in MMA with the kicks and the grappling, it kind of started suppressing my boxing. And, um, you know, that's where I'm a fan of yours because, I mean, you have really good kicks, side kicks, back kicks, um, and your boxing style is really good. And, you you know, you, you're getting better and better at it with what you're doing. So, you know, I just... You know, definitely God helps, family helps. I grew up a little bit. Um, I don't know. How old are you? I'm 29, man. About to be 30. Uh, April. Yeah, you, we... It's all we, down there from there, homie. Nah, all we still there. reaching our prime. Don't listen to his old ass. We still <laughs> reaching our prime. Hey, he ain't lying, hey, he ain't lying though, because I remember my management told me this, bro. This is no bullshit, bro. Because a lot of people feel like I'm a little impatient, which I am, right? So I got to look at myself and, and realize that I still got room to to grow and actually do within the company, within the actual company. But my my management told me this. He said, bro, just be patient, bro. You got at least 10, 15 more years. And I said, bro, 10 to 15? I'm like, bro, like, I'm be 40 something, bro. Hey, Yoel Romero. <laughs> Check. Yoel <laughs> Romero no, and Dan no. Henderson. Said, look at, hey, my man said, look at Glover Teixeira. I said, nah, bro. 
Yeah, Yoel yeah, Romero, dog. Pan Henderson, Glover Teixeira, 47 years old. These guys hey, reached hey, their prime. Hey, applause to them. I ain't trying to be that, though. Like, let me get my shit now, bro. You know I, what I, mean? like, I put it. I put in the leg work throughout probably shit. Like I said, my whole life I've been fighting. Like, no bullshit, right? So I've been fighting professionally since I was 18 years old. Well, you right. got 20 more years of running sprints up them hills with that fucking dummy on your shoulder. So stop crying about it now. You got to work, motherfucker. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how old you are. You going to be training your ass off for the next 40 years of your life, Joaquin. Not that hard. Not that hard. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because <laughs> you get hey, smarter. I ain't going to lie. George St. Pierre, G, because my man Dan touching 40-something, 40, 41, 42-something, and he's still out there doing triple backflips and doing planks, dog, on rings. Like he look, he look kind of skinny, yeah. though, man. I feel like when I retire fighting, I'm going to go into bodybuilding. I'm going to try to eat and get swole and shit. Just swole. You know? came, and, came and turn around. Can't wipe your ass. And baby! Look, I trick my coach <laughs> like that. I, I tell myself the more I complain at at the gym, the more the like the more tired I seem, the more I seem like I hate to work out. Um, you know, that's that's kind of my strategy going into training because I try to complain the whole time. So he'll like give me a little bit longer breaks and like so then I can make it through the training. But I'm still training hard. It's, look, it's look, I, I would say this, right? And I, and I heard you too, bro, because I'm a complaining motherfucker. I tell my coach all day, like, bro, why are we doing this, bro? You know what I mean? And look, and look, I was like, look, as long as I'm doing the work, I can talk shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to talk yeah. shit while I'm doing it, though. But, uh, no, but, you know, Joaquin, for me, I you, feel like. You married or you're single? No, I, well, I, I got a life partner. I have to keep it like that. Yeah. She, she want to ring so bad, boy. Man. Love my girl. She been with me since yeah. high school, so she the one. Good family. family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. These hoes all in my no DMs kids? now. I, I, I gotta stay strong. I gotta stay no strong, kids? bro. Yeah, no, I got kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. Oh, you do have kids. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one on the way. Actually, I got. Congratulations, a man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I was gonna say. I was gonna say because both of y'all like to complain. And as a married guy, you just start complaining more, man, because you, you always complain to your wife. She's just like, she's like, man. fuck off, bro. Like, man, yeah. look, I, did, I disagree oh, with you, on. Bags, because really? my, I feel like when my wife is around, I just stop talking because she's going to complain about shit. And I want to be able to be like, hey, can you just be quiet? Because the only thing up in the air is negativity. We don't need that around here. It's just See, to me, be quiet. If you ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't say right. nothing at all. Right. See, for me, hey, well, I get the sniffles, and I'm like, though, babe, bro. I'm fucking sick. And she's like, I'm taking care of three fucking kids. I'm taking them to school. I'm doing this. Like, see, look, like, see, y'all, y'all know where y'all messed up at? Y'all gave them the power. That ring is they <laughs> Look, my girl going to be acting different once she gets that ring. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. She's going to be acting like a dictator. I'm like, hold up, man. I'm going to walk inside on this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Shit does change. It does. does change. <laughs> Yo, they right. that. It's hey, it's the good life, Mike. You're you're damn right. It's the good life. No, nah, I mean, but I feel right like for real, for real, people just got to find the right one for them. It don't matter about marriage or mm-hmm. none of that. If you right. got the right one, you got the right one. If that's what you want to do, right. because you feel like that's how you want to progress in your relationship, then do that. But I feel oh, like my you, relationship. Yours is, is gonna tell to you off. something after she sees this episode. She can be like, oh, oh, what so you that? think that you think that we just in this just because we write for each other? You ain't oh, gonna no, lock me down. We keep an open line of communication. <laughs> we keep an open line of communication at all points, bro. At all yeah, times. That's, that's how you know, because she would have been in passenger so seat right now. I'm just you giving you a hard how's, time. Mac, how's your life going? Uh, love life going, homie? Mac. My my what? Your love life. Ah, you guys know how it is. Damn, bro, that's, He's that's, got all the boys at Karate Combat so drinking Bud Light. <laughs> bro, I actually kind of have a girlfriend, bro. Actually, bro. That would have that, man. Y'all know how it's going here. You ain't getting no play play, man. Yeah, like, that's bullshit. No, bro. No, bro. I'm low key, bro. I'm not fucking married, bro. So I kind of got a girl. Hey, Sean, hey, Sean Strickland got his band on our first episode on, on YouTube. First yeah, episode. Saying, I believe it, though. He said that Mac looked like he drugs girls' drinks at the bar. Damn. 
That's wild. <laughs> that you man like, just say anything, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's 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 first time. First that's up, I knew he would. I knew he'd talk shit. I knew he would talk shit. <laughs> hey, what you up to, man? Shit. You was in the car. You was going somewhere, or you was uh, returning yeah, from I, somewhere? I just got from the gym. I, I'm, I'm making a skit. I'm making a skit, bro. So I just got from the gym. I'm, I'm thinking about doing uh, David Goggins and Tony Ferguson, bro. So we we gonna drop that pretty soon. So yeah. you you got Tony then because he training with David. You got Tony in that fight. Let's go, Tony. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, I definitely got. Let's Tony. go, Tony. I don't got Tony. I don't got Tony like in my mind. I got Tony in my heart. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> I, how I, I bet. I only bet with my heart. Yeah, he oh. Oh. Tony. I'm not betting on Tony, <laughs> bro, but he I loves Tony. Man you know, oh, I'll drop tough. 20 bucks on my heart's feelings, bro. <laughs> El Cuco at back, bro. I'll drop 20 bucks when my heart says it's what's up, bro. That's, That's why I'm not tough. a good better. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've been, Yo, I've been I betting on wait, my bitch ass I had a dope point. I had a dope point that you guys asked me about my fucking, I don't know. Nobody cares, Mac. I, that's not about that, bro. That's why I, was, I wasn't trying to talk about that shit, bro. All it's right, a this. joke, bro. Dude, Relax, bro. You always get so mad. Yeah, you, you get worked animated, up, dog. Man. You get worked bro, up, I bro. don't even want to... Bro, listen. Hear me out. Joaquin, you guys were talking about uh, 30, fight another 10 years. Do you guys see the stat? This is literally what I've been trying to bring up this whole time, you dicks. <laughs> um, I think it was Luke Thomas isolated the, like, the statistic where people over 35 that have fought for a UFC title uh, in a UFC title fight are like 38 and 2. Did you guys know that? That's good for them. So the champions, over 35. Are, all the champions, yeah. <laughs> well, you all the you champions realize, are old. You, and the, well, and not, what, not only that, right? People forget the UFC kind of controls who gets the title, and when your time comes up next, the UFC mm-hmm. does control that. Because if you look at uh, Charles, uh, uh, what's his name? Not Charles. I'm sorry, Benil Darush, right? Yeah, when he fought yeah. Charles Oliveira. Why did Benil Darush fight Charles Oliveira? He should have just fought Israel already. Makachev. He was already on he the nine-fight nine winning streak. But they said, hey, give us one more. <laughs> yeah. Give us one more, we're going to give you that title, boy. That boy ended up yeah. losing, you know, and he'll mm-hmm. probably never get a title shot again. And now who who else is dealing with this, right? Bilal Muhammad. Marab. Marab. Oh, Bilal. Well, no, 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 no. Marab played himself. Marab's different. I, Bilal like is, a, is a... You're Marab right, Bilal, boy, Bilal but he perfect. played himself yeah. because he, he put relationship over the actual goal, right? Because even yeah. if you're my brother, right, the best got to get the belt, bro. We and should they, fight they each other. Marab if we that. really boys, let's see who's better. Unless he just knew that he wasn't that's better. See, that's and that's 100, Mike, because we're going to get paid together at the end of the day. And you're right. So I'm going to fight the shit for, out of you. <laughs> I'm going to fight. <laughs> for a check. Let's go for the title and the check. Hey, watch and this, this is way. my opportunity. Oh, the way it's coming back home, right? It's coming back <laughs> to the gym at the end of the day. You know, that's so, crazy. So for Marab, I feel like it's a different situation because my thing is like, bro, you work this hard for what? And I understand that yeah. you call this dude your brother, but you want to become a champion, right? Like that at the end of the day, the best got to have the belt. That's just how I feel, you know? But I was going to say Bilal Muhammad is, is definitely the one that's, you know, stressing because my thing, my dude about to fight, uh, who? Not Kamal How Uzi. is Kobe fighting after three years off? Right. That's but crazy. It again, <sighs> they control that. And I'm not mad at it. They trying to get the numbers. Kobe going to sell more than Bilal. Right? No, that's Bilal that, that's that, uh, what did, what did Tony Ferguson call it? At the press conference, he called Dana, it. Oh, Dana White Dana privilege. White privilege. Dana White yeah. privilege. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta get a shirt. Dana White privilege. <laughs> Dude, I gotta get a shirt. He dropped that. He dropped that line Fucked so up. dirty, bro. So That's pretty fucking good, though. All right, Joaquin. Yeah, yeah. I always ask everybody this: thirty seconds or less. How do you beat these fighters? How do I? Hold on, thirty seconds or less. How do I beat them? Uh-huh. I got to you so like, like a short left like like that type of answer. Yeah. Like like uh, you 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 pick whatever the fuck you want to say. Rapid <laughs> response. How do you beat this fighter? Kevin Holland. Uh nuts on forehead. <laughs> Chad Mendez. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh Ian Machado Gary. Knockout second round. Luke That's a good fight. I like that fight. Luke, 
Luke, hey, brain damage. I, I can't fight him. Brain damage. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I can't mess with him. He got brain damage. I, I can't kill that man in the cage. I don't want to do that to him. Uh, Wonder Boy Thompson. Wonder Boy, uh, spinning heel kick. kick. Shavkat. <laughs> Shavkat. Uh, decision. Unanimous. Kobe. Kobe Covington. Ain't you gonna make it to the cage? Woo. Fair enough. Damn. Yeah. You think All you right. beat Hamza in a decision? You know they're gonna Shab- give him the Shab- decision Shab- if y'all go to time. Oh, Romanov. Yeah. I'm thinking. I thought yeah, you yeah, call Rock Hamza yeah. Shavkat sometimes. I see their <laughs> names <laughs> fucking me up. Yeah, <laughs> 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 ain't got no vowels in their name. Shit, man. Uh, Based off the Jeff Neal fight, I say you can finish Shavkat Romanov. Oh no, most of most of, but he'll be he be more patient. He'll be now, tough. Now that, yeah, now, be ready. Now that he, I think I think he popped his cherry with a black dude. You know, so he like he like nah nah. I gotta take my time with them. <laughs> Yeah, they hit hard. Like, they hit hard. So I feel like though, if I did fight Hamza to my head, bro, I, I just gotta survive that wrestling, bro, in the first round. Dude, I think he's shown he, that straight he up. He's gonna shoot immediately. Immediately. Mm-hmm. He's got I a mean, round he, of pressure. You know, like, like it's like when the start of the bell, uh, the Greyhound races, bro. As soon as they open that motherfucking gate, boom, bro. Like he he gonna shoot. Just so I feel like just you know, throw you the go wrestling like a mug to fight. Throw him. the so head he, kick. He Throw the head kick right away, even if his knees on the ground. Fuck it, take the DQ. You knocked like, him out. Like, yeah, either way. Fuck that I wrestling that. shit. <laughs> fuck all that wrestling shit. I'm trying <laughs> to box. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Mike's in BKFC bro, now. He's like, just kick him in the head. Fuck it. Leave Eddie alone, bro. I'm gonna tell you that right now, bro. <laughs> yeah, Eddie his heel. All sweaty. This is his fault. All sweaty and shit. He on that steroids trying to keep up. He trying to keep up on them steroids. Nah, he said he's trying to keep up with them I steroids. said he should fire whoever got him this opportunity once I do it to him. I'm finna do it to him. Man, right. don't do him All too right. bad, bro. Don't do him too bad, Mike. I ain't gonna lie, hey. that's a different... Bird knuckle boxing a different breed. I done fought a couple motherfuckers out here, bro. You hit that nigga one time. I be like, shit, you hear me? So for you to go rounds and start face-to-face like this... Bro, you built different. I remember Thank when you, Luke brother. Rocko, Luke, Luke Rocko said, "What? It was gonna be easy yep. work with you and Burn Knuckle." I said, "Oh, he mm-hmm. don't even know." <laughs> I said, "He don't even know." <laughs> it was easy. Hey, you, he you, quit. Hey, no you that Luke said, "Don't hit me no more." That nigga more. said, "That my tooth." <laughs> yeah, he said, "Oh shit! Fuck all this! Said, fuck all I'm this, done, bro. bro! I'm done. This shit. It's fucking oh, up my room." All right. So so uh Mike Mike was Mike was nice enough to bless me with a chance to corner him and uh to be in his corner and uh at BKFC against Alvarez. My only goal is to yell Mike louder than Eddie Alvarez's wife yells Eddie. That's it. That's your only goal. Mike! Mike! Oh it, if you, you watch go, Eddie's fights, you hear somewhere, his wife. I'll tell you that. You hear Eddie's <laughs> wife on all his fights. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How you how you At gonna say my name again, bro? I gotta hear that. Whose name? I'm sure I'm sure she's a sweet lady, by the way. Uh, I said no no dude, no, but you we all need bags, a ride right? or die like that, bro. Oh, how, yeah. how you gonna say Mike's name again? Mike! Mike! <laughs> dude, bro, the Eddie! <laughs> you Eddie! Pitch, she's loud. <laughs> Apparently the higher the pitch it is, she gets loud, man. I gotta do it. No, nah, that's funny as hell. <laughs> when is that when is that fight? When is that fight for Are you looking to have another one before the end of the year or you're waiting for early choice. next early next year maybe? That ain't, that ain't my choice. And my thing, right. I don't even stress about it no more. They they, right. they heard what I needed to say. I, I told uh people that, you know, I wanted to fight at the end of the year, but I ain't stressing. I, I gotta But I gotta what if there's a fallout? I know you cut a lot of weight now, but like, what if there's a fallout? What if there's a fight on your on your that you see that you like? If one of these motherfuckers ain't there, let me let me in. Oh, uh, I guess it all depends. Here it, here it is. I mean, no. fuck, Luke could go out. Gary could go out on two ninety six. That's in December. No, they'll December probably 16th. be there. They'll probably be there. But who knows? I mean, I mean you know, fucking injury, whatever. It could be he ain't fucking I, I, he ain't going to 170 in, in, in a week. Yeah, you, but <laughs> if you started now. <laughs> yeah, if I start now, if I definitely, but my thing is too, right? 
that's cool for the preparation, but people forget you still got life, right? I'm starting to understand that. I got money in the bank now. I don't have to rush nothing. If anything, I'm helping the UFC out if I do that. But yeah. then a lot of times when my management tell me, hey, well, you got to understand that the UFC don't do that. Then why I got to get the fight then? That's you right. Know, right. I I'm hear you, but... Of, I'm just going off of what people tell me, so I'm just like, all right, then I could just chill until my moment do come. Like we said, we got to be more patient then. I think and Rusty got to... I agree. I'm no fucking manager. I agree. Don't Too many motherfuckers advice, taking last 100%. minute fights and losing. It, dude, the win ratio yeah. is like 70-30, I mean, bro. And if you're getting paid like that, then cool for you. But you're not, you not going in the fight for the purpose of winning. You're going in there yeah. to get paid. So that's the difference right. between me and them as well, right? If I'm going out there, I'm going out there with the ideal of winning. Right. Not just getting a check, but I won't vote. Of, of course. <laughs> you of know, because I tell people all the time, I don't, I don't fight for two checks. I fight for three. I need that bonus too, bro. Yeah, yeah, and it's unfortunate that I, I had two great performances, bro, in my uh at 170, and I, I I didn't touch not one performance, bro. But when I see fighters like Justin Gaethje, every time they go out there, they but get that's a bonus. the hunger. Time, that's what I'm talking knocked, about. Whether, whether they get knocked out or whether they fight, go to a decision, they get a bonus. But that's I mean, what that's I'm that's talking about. That's the hunger that I'm talking about. Like you, like fuck it. I see this fight. I want, I want one, if not both of these motherfuckers. You let it be known, because there is a couple loud mouths that have, and you have a good platform where you you post funny videos. You make yeah. you make up shit on Instagram or on TikTok and shit. And you're a badass fighter if you just. It, it's the weight control. Obviously, that's a big problem for a lot of us. And then. If if you let it be known to Dana or them, I don't know, because Sean Strickland, you know, he kind of did it. He put his mouth everywhere. He put his nose in everybody's ass. Pause. Not <laughs> pause. Uh, he put his nose in everything. Yeah. And yeah. made sure that he got up there. But then when it when it came time to fight, he did show up and he was ready to battle whoever it was. He's and I, always and I ready. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not scared to talk about the like the opportunities I want to get. I just got to get the opportunity. Right. I, I, I know. Like I haven't, and it's I haven't coming. Got the it's coming for you. I and know it, it is. is. That's exactly, bro. So with me just being patient, the UFC is going to see that I'm actually somebody that they do want to help push one day. It might not be today. What that boy say? It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. Marino. <laughs> yeah, he said. I will but be. Damn it, pero, pero, maybe not next month, but someday I will be UFC champion. That's that's you my know. dog. What, um, damn, what is it? Brandon Marino. I can't think Brandon of his name. Brandon Marino. He said that. Pero, yeah. pero, maybe not today. You doing like maybe not accent. next Come month. Cuban accent. That's Cuban as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the OL. That's the OL. I'm going to say, I'm Tony Montana. Mira, mira, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, <laughs> but not today. But I will be champion. See, dude, you did Cuban. You were doing OL. Mine wasn't better, but it was Brandon Marino. Yeah, that was pretty he, good, he though, it. Mac. That was good. Hey, Joaquin. Yeah, there you go. Bro, yeah. I appreciate you coming on, man. Welcome back any fucking time you want to. Chill as fuck. I, I, I love everybody vibe here, bro. Yeah. So, Thank you, brother. Yeah, Great to you. see you, man. Big Ben, I want a rematch. Rematch? <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I do. <laughs> don't fuck tell me I don't, because I didn't even punch you hard. I was you, more you, concerned. I wanted to take your belly shots. I, but you, you picked it up with each shot. So no, I, I didn't. I start. I didn't even go hard. I could punch way harder, but you're. I, know I just you wanted to harder. see. You, it didn't even look like you hit me hard on the last one, but it just got through. I don't know what the fuck happened. How you doing, man? <laughs> doing good, man. Let's go. Let's go. Oh shit! Shirt. Let's go. Oh, he's got the mic T on. Yeah. Let's go. Big Ben, man, you ready to knock some fucking teeth out on the second, baby? Every day, every day, it's like that, man. I like, uh, I spar quite, I spar more more than most most guys I hear that spar. So it's something I who, really. Enjoy. Who do you spar? Who are these poor bastards you're sparring? <clears throat> so Kalen Hall, you've seen him. He's he's a little bigger than me. 
Uh, you oh, see him with me. Last, yeah, both both fights. You see him with me. Uh, he's my guy. You know, once I got him, I always got fun fun sparring. He's been with me since uh, 2019. Uh, he's been a blessing, a huge help for me. Oh, and then, awesome. uh, I got a gym full of guys. You know, I got I got some fighters that you know. Uh, I got a little you know a little gym I'm in Kenosha. It's kind of a quiet place. But we got a group of guys, and you know, every week, man, we stay we stay busy. Teach a lot of kids at that gym too, don't you? Got a good kids program. Yeah, my 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 top guy Cody Lynn, who fights this weekend, actually uh, runs a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu program for the kids, and then James Bennett and uh, a couple of my other guys run the kids kickboxing. You know, I do what I can when I'm around, but they they're really the ones that get all the credit. They're doing an outstanding job for the youth, and uh, I'm just blessed to have a really great group of people around me that. We're, we're able to help the community, so it's a good thing, man. Do you charge That's extra great. for um, post-fight promo cut training? <laughs> no. What? what no. What? You know what I mean, bro. Like, you, you're famous for your post-fight, post-win promos. You do, like, the WW, Bro, how? You know what I'm... Oh, you you're... Just pretend you don't so do your that last fight in That's Denver... Just, you you cut you know, a pretty you know, good promo after the that's fight. What I'm saying. You really did. did. I you loved your promo. Pay extra. A- after Overeem, I danced. You know, I, I did the laugh a couple times. You know, they're a little mm-hmm. bit different. The last, <laughs> one, the last one. You know what I'm talking about? And that was on the. I, you know, I gave it the business, and it came off natural, and it was a good one. So it's supplemental with the training. It just comes with it. This guy, yeah, you hey. got to do it on the spot. Let's go. I did see the uh, I did see the belly punches between you two. I don't know that Ben was swinging very fucking hard though. They were just telling us about that. We we're gonna need the context for that. Ben, no, I'm gonna go take Fuck my piss. That. I'm gonna ben go take looked my piss like he me. was punching nah. way better than nope. I was. I was nope. going left hook to his right hook. His was coming in swift and smooth, and I wasn't even trying. I was just telling him I want a rematch because I didn't even try to give him my power because he starts me off, right? And he goes, just please don't hurt your hand. And I'm thinking, what the hell? Like, so I'm not I'm not going to try to dig into his ribs, but now we got to do it on fucking fight week when I'm cutting weight. <laughs> hey, Ben's not going to be cutting weight. That's a horrible idea, bro. Cutting <laughs> Yeah, probably fight week is probably not a, a not great a idea. Week to do it, I guess. I definitely yeah, want to be over there fucking eating a whole pizza, and you're over there fucking eating salmon slices. All right, Ben, ple- pleasure to meet you, brother. Or again, uh, good to see. You. I showed up late for this uh, interview. I apologize. Uh, I do have a funny ass story though. So first time you and I met, and you won't. I doubt you'll remember this. So. You're barely remembering it, drinking them glasses of Clase. <laughs> I, I remember it. Hush, Mike. You just hush. So <laughs> you fought. Uh, you fought. You and uh, it was the Mike Perry, Rock Holden. Who did you fight? Josh Copeland. Yes. And shout out to that guy because that was he was a fucking animal too. <laughs> but um, oh, y'all did have a hell of a battle. He was tough, bro. A couple, they couple went, rounds, and then you put him down for good. Hell of bro, a fight. It was, it was check a, that an amazing out. fight. And so my wife, who's not a, uh, a, not, a, not a huge fight fan, was sitting there. We were sitting there like the third row. It was me, my wife, and Mighty Mouse watching this shit. Everybody was, we were all on the edge of our seats, dude, because it was so good. And my wife looks at me and goes, it doesn't look like these guys are hitting that hard. And I just looked at her, and I'm like, babe, like, these are some of the hardest punchers on the planet, just absolutely slugging each other for how many minutes at this point? How many rounds did you guys go? Like we we went three and a half. Yeah, it was three rounds yeah. total. He, oh, he, yeah. stopped, uh, he stopped at the end of the third round. I mean, every punch was like, yeah. You just hear it, you know what I mean? And so uh, I, was like, I was laughing. I was like, yeah, you, you don't get it, you know what I mean? And so we went back to the hotel, and you and I were talking – and I, was, I sat down next to you, and you had you, your family and stuff around. I sat down. I'm like, hey, man, like, pleasure. We started. We, we talked for, like, five minutes. And you finally looked over at me, and you go, hey. You are like, my apologies. You're like, but I can't even, I don't even understand what you're saying right now. You're like, 
and I'll catch up with you later. And I just go, I go, dude, no problem. I completely get it. I mean, you've just been in an absolute war. <laughs> and you listen to me talk to you for like three minutes. You're like, I, I apologize. It was so, I, I, I got a kick out of it. That was a great story, Josh. Yeah, what? Fucking great, man. I've got a good memory. So I don't know if you know this, uh, let you know about me. I'm a little, little bit of an elephant. Uh, I don't forget. Uh, it's when people talk about it. Like, I can remember. I got memories at three, four years old. People are astounded by what I remember. Not, like, photographic memory, no shit like that, because I wouldn't be fighting. Uh, but I'm pretty good at remembering stuff. And I remember our conversation, and I remember hanging out with you. And you weren't that drunk. I didn't think you were slurring. I just remember saying I had, like, blood coming out of my eye. Like, the, my teeth were messed up. And I was like, my guys went to go get this stuff. And I'm like... I wanted to hang out with you. You know, you just got done sponsoring me and everything else. It's just like, I'm like, I better go put some fucking, you know, cleanser on this eye. It was, it was also my hand. My hand actually had a tooth. I, 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 I punched him in the tooth and he put a hole in my hand and the uh, medics at the venue not do anything about it. And I'm like, that's a human tooth. Like this thing's going to get infected. So I was actually really worried yeah. about it. And I just asked to go like, Hey, let me go get some cleanser on this thing which i had to you know leave the area and i just wanted to be as respectable as i could it wasn't yeah. because you were slurring or anything you weren't too, you weren't you weren't too bad <laughs> <laughs> you're you're on your way though yeah i had I mean, the, hell i was doing I shots with bottle. mike uh, my, i was doing my mike was walking around with a class as little bottle he's like yeah do a shot homie <laughs> uh oh, is it true from a, from the podcast like this is the thing you gradually get you know, drunker. Get up. Yeah. Get up. I just, <laughs> well, I would years. be, if I was not about to fight in a couple of weeks, I'd be getting fucking hammered right now, dude. Yeah. We gotta I, do one I after, the, after December 2nd. We gotta, we gotta do another one. Let's I'll take some Scott's pot. bottle. I'm down, bro. Well, I'll mix. I'll go tequila, Scott's, Hennessy, or cognac. <laughs> fucking all of it. Let's just fucking drink it all up and I'm gonna throw it up. All over Eddie's face. One funny thing about when you were doing our body shots is I actually thought about Luke Rockhold on the second body punch. The first one he hit me, and I'm kind of kidding around, you know. Uh, the second one you hit me, and I go, that's son of a bitch. Uh. Hit me and I felt every one of your knuckles like <laughs> nobody else's. And I go, damn. And, then they, and Luke took that shit in the jaw. I'm like, yeah, that probably didn't feel good. Ah, but damn, you, you, man. You, have some, you got some really good hands for bare knuckles. The little tiny ones. He they're, killed they're me. The one, the one win Luke had was when he posted that Burger King commercial. <laughs> and he's like, what I don't know that? how I'm going to eat the new Whopper. I got these tiny hands. <laughs> he got me with that one. That shit was funny, dude. That shit was funny. Yeah, this... I, uh, well, damn. We were just talking with Joaquin Buckley. You know him? He is the guy responsible for the spinning back kick, yep. fabulous knockout. Two touch. That's pretty cool. Over you don't see that every yeah. day. <clears throat> that is that is exactly perfect response for that question. That is the answer I was looking for. Um, but no, yeah, he was really cool. Uh, we were talking. He told me not to beat up Eddie too bad, but you know I got to do what I got to do. You can't at the end talk of the like day. that, to us, man. There's it's just not possible, you know. Now we sign the contract because you know we can be as friendly as we want to be. We, I, I, I respect a lot of my opponents, and I try to. All be your, very, you and your opponents are always kind of nice to each other because you know what you're getting your big asses into. <laughs> but you see, John Goldwyn, you, you see these guys. You know, they get into the ring, dude, and it's like, yeah, they're fighting for their fucking life, and they're coming at me. You know, they're oh they're coming gosh. at me to fucking win, and. uh there is absolutely no way we can not give them a hundred percent. So, so I guess my question to you, Ben, is like transitioning over from MMA to bare knuckle. What was it like? Where do you feel like your advantages are? And where do you maybe wish you weren't fucking doing bare knuckle at some point? I would, God, that's gotta be so tough. It's a different animal, so to speak. Uh, there, there's good. There's definitely pros and cons to this. Uh, bare knuckle is dangerous. You know, make no mistake. Um, 
the cuts. You know, you can get cut easy, things like that. But honestly, I really, really enjoy this because at my age, the wrestling and the dangers that we can take from MMA just it really outweighs it, man. Because you know, like I said, I'm tra- my my Kalen was talking about when people watch us do takedowns and we're hitting the ground, the room would stop because they're just like, my God, if somebody lands on a on a limb wrong or you know anything like that, it's like you're not out for a little while. Like that's pro- for me at this point, it's probably the career. My career's over if I take any you know crazy wrestling injury at this point in time. It's probably game over for me, and I don't have to worry about that. You know what I mean? I just really get to focus on boxing and. Still, you know, we got to train hard. We got to do our things, but there's a, a huge danger element uh, of the injuries that are decreased during the training, and that's the thing that people don't really realize how dangerous MMA is. Because in MMA, it's like people don't realize what taking a fucking head kick's all about. Like, that's dangerous. Like, that's gonna take some time off your lifespan. You know, like the wrestling and things of that nature. So, yeah. I'm, I'm really enjoying the training with the bare knuckle. I get to focus on just my hands. I like it because I think it's a very fan-friendly ordeal. It's action. You know, we're going out there, and, you know, the, the average fight fan, this is what they want to see. They want to see guys just fucking somebody get knocked out, you know. They don't really want to see two guys. Gra- you know, there's jiu-jitsu people that like the grappling. They see it, but let's be honest, that can get made boring very easy. Uh, two guys start stalling. You know, one guy's trying to hang on to a win. You ain't doing that shit in bare knuckles so easy. You know, I know guys have, have pulled it off by dancing around for a couple rounds, but for the most part, as long as one of the guys is in there to win, the shit's going to be entertaining. I love it. <clears throat> I love that outlook so, on it. Do you get any road work in? Because you're saying you're loving the training. Do you do any miles or you get some sprints and shit? Is. Yeah. Yeah, man. As far as my strength and conditioning goes, that didn't change too much. That's you know, weekly, um, I got three sessions a week that are mandatory for the cardio, for strength training, to keep my body, you know, working. Uh, so that never changed. I just stick with that program. It's just instead of, you know, working, working, striking, working jujitsu, working wrestling, and then working it all together through the week. Now it's just I box, I box, I box, and I box. You know, that's the difference. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. I spar, I, agree. I spar on average about three times a week, which is for me that's riding a bike. You know, I really just love doing it. It's easy to do, and you know, I'm I'm good because I control my atmosphere, so I don't really get hit and take damage. Uh, not like when I watch in my militish days, the 155, 170 pound guy, they'd kill each other. Like, yeah, they, you shouldn't do that all the time. That's you know, right. Robbie Lawler. It's like Robbie Lawler pulled away from sparring. I'm like, yeah, hey, you guys spar like that. That's not good right. for you. So it's different for me. I've learned a lot uh, of ways, and I'm, I'm really good at sparring. Well, and yeah, checks it helps out because be 280 pounds, huh, doesn't it? And it checks Two, out. I mean, he fought, he fought Hell. Tim Sylvia in 2001. <laughs> I mean, so you have to be one of the longest active uh it's got to be one of the longest active combat sports careers currently right now because i mean it was like Olenek, who was he fought in 1999 i think he's out he yeah. fought over him over him's out i'm trying to think of someone who's actually been going on longer than you then now yeah my first recorded fight is july 1999 <laughs> jesus christ was that amateur yeah, the first name. Yeah. First name Rampage. Place. Rampage Jackson's trying to fight Cannon Briggs. He, but he was even. He didn't debut in 2001, did he? Dude, anyway, Rampage's been fighting a long time. Yeah. But that's how long. I, I really. I'm trying to think of someone who's active right now. Yeah, there's only a handful of us. It, there's not it would many. be like, yeah. Stipe? But he, no. Not nearly as long, though. Because it's not about and age. He has been it's active about, in three years. Yeah, how long your it's career about is. The, what the people saw from back in the day. So it was like times we we saw Nick Diaz's. We saw, um, you know, back in the day was, you know, unfortunately Diego Sanchez hasn't had some success in a while. Um, all the tough one guys. Uh, you brought up Gokan Saki. I mean, he he came yeah. in. It was really late. So. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me tell you, this is how long ago I started fighting. 
my first three times fighting, my first three days of fighting, I had, I had six fights. You were doing <laughs> tournaments? They were all, yeah, I had to fight two times a night. And, blah, blah, blah. and one of them would have been three, but obviously tournaments, things happen. So, you know, somebody didn't something. But, you uh, fought yeah. Mike Whitehead in a tournament, didn't you? That was one name I always thought was weird. Yeah, that's a fucking shitty loss on my record because it was a two-round fight. Like, he yeah. wanted a decision on me after I kneed him in the head at the end of the second round. And he even says, he, he's like, dude, I was completely out. I'm done. But he won the decision. The two-round fight. It's on my Ooh. pro record. That's there just should, fucking garbage. There should be no two-round decisions. No. Ever. Let's get the fuck out of here. Ever. Right. Even the Ultimate Fighter. You're an undefeated bare-knuckle boxer. Sky is the limit. You know, uh, you got the whole... I mean... you. You're you're gonna be huge after this show, man. You you're gonna try to steal the show from me again with another <laughs> promo cut. You know? Gotta be done, man. I gotta get out there and do it though. Like, I talk, love talk, it for talk, you talk. too, man. You're I'm I'm big fan, bro, because you're a super humble, oh, look at him. powerful got fucking guy, He's got man. The shirt. I think you're you got great energy and you really bring it when you fight, and that's what it's all about, man. Definitely, the fans gotta watch on December for you. I'm I'm proud to get the show going for you, man. I told you you've heard me in my interviews. I have no problem getting behind you. Um, when they were asking before you became the official face of Bare Knuckle, I was already calling you the face of Bare Knuckle, and I said I I, I I believed you had a lot to do with why I even got signed. I know that Dave kind of you know started with Paige Van Zant, but you were like a big deal, man. He was it was his first big investment, and you paid off huge. And now he's obviously ventured out, and so I put a lot of credit to you. You know, what I mean? thank I'm, you. I'm do or die, man. I'm, I'm with you on this one, as I said. Yeah, I'm with you too, brother. I love Whatever the boxing the shit. I love the bare knuckle boxing shit because you know someone like Canelo wouldn't want to fight me in my sport. Nope. No. Nope. Maybe Look at Malik, Malik Nagy lost to Artem, bro. <laughs> Artem can't slug like you. Nor, nor would Fury want to fight with uh, Ben. was yeah. never a good boxer. There you go. <laughs> so that's why Artem beat him. Oh, Shout out Artem Lobov. <clears throat> him hey, and ben, Connor ain't friends anymore? No, they don't like each other no more. No. Artem tried to sue him. Yeah, I heard mm. about that. That's what I'm talking about. You know, here, here's random, but I've been meaning to bring this up. I got two two things, actually. I've kind of met quite a few fighters. Look at me sitting here now talking to you, and Mike Perry's obviously a co-host. You were the first fighter I ever took a picture with. Ben. Yeah. It was after... That's was a great it one, stat, bro. That's, it, that's my stat, bro. That's, that's a great stat. stat. No, it's, no it's, bro, I was always it. scared. I was always scared. I never wanted to talk to fighters. Like I didn't want to go up and, and put them off by asking for a picture or anything. But I went to, like I said earlier, I went to all the Connor fights. So was it 189? They had the Ultimate Fighter the next day. There was Remember a there was, there was a double yeah, header. Yeah, 189 was in it. It was in Vegas because yeah. that was the UFC Fan Expo. Yeah. So yeah. then the Ultimate Fighter finale was the next day, Sunday night. We were both flying out of Vegas on Sunday night during that fight card, I believe. That had to have been the one I saw. But I saw you at the airport, and I was just chilling there. I was like, dude, that's fucking Ben Roth. I'm like. He looks he looks nice. Went up and uh, you even had your your girlfriend at the time or wife I'm I'm not sure take the picture with us and it was the first picture I ever took with a UFC fighter, so that was a cool memory. Always always remember that. So shout out to you for that. Second, let's talk about some relevant shit real quick. Not that your the stuff we were talking about wasn't relevant, but as a UFC former UFC heavyweight who's been at the top. I mean you've been in mm, the you've Aspen been around Hall forever. Fight, the Pavlovich let's get in, fight. Yeah. What do we think about that? And what do you think about who John should fight when he comes back? Like, what do you, yeah, what do you think? What do you think well, about the heavyweight sorry, title? Sorry. If we're talking about the heavyweight division, mm -hmm. and what was the question? The but fight just, that happened the other night, the Aspinall Pavlovich yeah. fight, what did you think about it? And what do you think about John Jones and Stipe? Or should Aspinall get to step in and fight yeah. one of those two? Or what, what, what should happen? It's a little bit of a mess, honestly, because you heard Dana White's pretty adamant that he wants Jones and Stipe. And when he said earlier, he's like, uh, "Not we didn't even offer Stipe. We don't want to disrespect Stipe. It makes yeah. me laugh because all I could hear is, we're not peeing Stipe unless we think it's to get knocked out by John Jones. 
I just yeah. feel like that man has been disrespected. He's never was really given his, you know, dues and publicity for how great and all of his accomplishment as a heavyweight. I think he's a great person, does a lot for his community, obviously. He's got a lot going for him. And just as you can see, Fuski doesn't push that. They don't really like guys that are good people. It's just it's just my vibes over the last 15 years. I've just noticed it. You know, I know guys that would do fundraisers and community service and things for their stuff, and the UFC wouldn't say anything about it. So it was always pretty sad, and I always felt like, for a lot of years there, Stipe was on his run. He didn't really get treated very well. And you, he's been pretty vocal about that, too, that he didn't feel that way. So when I heard him say they didn't even offer it, it just makes me laugh. Like, you could have offered it. You could have said, hey, you know, this is a fight to make. And, you know, and Stipe, Stipe said, no, 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 I want only want the John Jones fight. Now, he didn't even get that option. So that just makes me laugh because that's just, that's the way it's been, you know. That's been all. Real quick, I'll come back to that fight. Uh, obviously, it was super exciting and for him. The guy taken on two-week notice, he, he, he said everything. He was so truthful and he was nervous. He was scared. He was all these things. And he goes out and does it. You know, he's the new interim champ. And I just think there's something that people should always remember about that. When you hear, oh, he's scared. That don't mean shit. Back a raccoon up in a corner. Let nature tell, teach you something. Just because something's scared doesn't mean it just become exponentially more dangerous. So scared is never. I always try to te- teach my guys the same thing. Just because someone's scared, you you that should worry you too. That means that motherfucker's coming for you harder than ever. He's fighting for his I life. Love, I love the fear on fight night. It's that's what makes fight night so special. It's a feeling that you don't get. And, he, and I get anxious about a lot of things, especially in my older age nowadays, just fucking driving to the store sometimes. I'm, like, anxious on the road. But on fight night, there's nothing like... Some t- I mean, I'm pretty cool all week. And then, and then on fight night, when I get there and I get to the show and I get ready, man, we were just... I was supposed to fight Logan Paul. I mean, there was no nerves or fear, really, for that because I wasn't even for sure going to fight. But we were ready and like mentally you can tell I get in this position of focus uh, as if I was the one that was going to fight. And, you know, this on December 2nd, I mean, I hope I'm fucking terrified of Eddie because then I'm really dangerous. It's, it's something there, man. It's a life lesson. I, I actually said there's two kinds of scared. There really is. There's the dangerous kind that you just described. And there is the scared where the guy gets reluctant. He questions himself, and that's not good. That's mm-hmm. the kind of scared that people hope they're talking about. And they say, "Oh, he's scared. He's scared." Because then you get your ass kicked, and uh, you can't ever, you can't, you can't second guess yourself, and you can't question what you're about because that's a bad place to be in as well. So there is two kinds of scared. That's what I've seen in my 24 years of fighting. But just saying he's scared, that don't mean shit. Like, not at all. Yeah. And. Uh, for, for you, you're the kind of guy that's dangerous because you fuel off of that. You know what I mean? You're the guy that's, oh, he's scared. Well, you better be fucking, that, that motherfucker's yeah, I'm a little, coming. I'm a little raccoon and you back into <laughs> yeah. the corner, bitch. I'm going to bite your nipples off. <laughs> 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 that, that's solid points. Solid points, man. Uh, so, a little bit of so fear is always healthy. Though, man, young guy that's, you know, got a, got a long career in the heavyweight division. Obviously got a huge backing, so... He's doing his thing. He's sitting there. He's pretty much open to fight anybody. You got Stipe and Jones. Sounds like the UFC pretty much made up their mind. They're going to wait for John Jones to come back. That's like a leg. It's like a legacy fight, I guess we would call it, for Stipe mm-hmm. and John Jones. So I get it. I'm guessing they both are happy to wait for it too because it is the most meaningful fight. Everybody yeah. wants the John Jones fight, whether they can win or not. It's like John Jones is John and Jones, like. He's the man, you know what I mean? Like, they even talk about the Francis and how they can make that fight because it's John Jones, you know. So, I get it. Um, you know, then what so happened? Often, what do they do with Espinel? I don't so know. So often in the UFC, so many times over the years, these fights were right there for everyone mm. to see and want. Mm. And they wanted this these fights so bad, and they just... Don't fucking make them happen. There's so many of those fights, and I can't even Jones give Stipe you one back. example. You could have done done Jones <laughs> Stipe right after the DC shit. That would have been huge. So many, man. Um, some other ones. 
It happens in every sport, right? Like uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao should have happened five years prior. <laughs> Still highest selling pay per view of all time, though. So they Doesn't at least matter. got on it. Still should have happened time. five years prior. Yeah. The, the one, the one that always stood out to me was Ferguson and Habib. Oh, because yeah. there was five you know times. everybody why, when 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 Ferguson was on his shit when he was everybody was like, damn, that's gonna be the fight. Like, let's be honest, that man was on a serious tear at his at his peak. And everyone wanted to see that fight. It was it was just like one thing. It wasn't even the UFC's fault. UFC even it made the fight. Five the fight times. Just didn't happen. It was just truly a cursed fight. Rafael and McGregor. Oh, I'm glad we didn't see that. I think that would have derailed Connor. Like straight up back I then. Don't. I think RDA, RDA probably uh, would have fucking grapple fucked him for sure. Eddie Alvarez I, I think beat. So. Eddie Alvarez beat. How far? Yeah, up. but McGregor don't fight like he showed up that night, bro. Eddie <laughs> Eddie was just like fucking smashing buttons on a UFC five controller, bro. Like he was going at it. It was brilliant. But <sighs> McGregor would have been more methodical. He would have got held against the cage for a few rounds before he had any success. Look what Mendez did. I don't know. I'm not getting into that, but hundred percent I think RDA would have beat Connor. I think it was like He's not honestly, crazy because look at what he did to Anthony Pettis. You know, Anthony is very you know Pretty, you know, works to be well rounded. Has submission wins, uh, but mostly known for striking. And he got completely shut down with the wrestling. That RDA night. would cardio the fuck out of him against the cage. Yeah, and, it'd probably... and it's, he's not crazy. It's, it's probably pretty good. Huh. But I... you know, McGregor, he always pulled some shit out of his ass because Chad Mendes should have did that and kind of kind of shocked us all by his game plan the night that he fought Connor in one eighty nine. So. Mm-hmm. It's hard to oh, say, man. man, when someone is hitting on all cylinders. Man, you know Dez did hella good in bare knuckle, too. Eddie I mean, can fire on all cylinders, and there's nothing he's going to fucking do to me. I'll tell you that hey, right what now. Was the, uh, hang on. Matt, can you pull up? Are you, statistician. Can hmm. you pull up the uh, fight record between uh, Mike Perry and Eddie Alvarez? What do you mean? Like, there? Yeah, their they're opponents, fight, they're fight they're, records. Yeah, I'm talking about opponents, right? So uh, I added up. Yeah, go go for that, Perry. You. Go I that. added up the. Uh, we talked about our first ten fights, and because uh, I said I was nine and zero with nine knockouts, and he's like, "Oh, I went up to ten and zero. Apparently, maybe one of them was a submission, but apparently it was ten and zero with ten finishes." And I added up his opponent's record, and it was like. 84 wins to 68 win losses. And mine was 75 wins to 22 losses were my first 10 opponents record. Added he up. had a he had a Khabib style intro to the sport for sure. It's not super crazy difference but technically it is. No, that's a big about that's a big over difference. 20 or 30 loss difference in the opponent choice. Like yeah. I wasn't fighting fucking no bums i was fighting fucking tough guys i have the legit one right here it was 84 in 68 versus 75 and 22 that's not even close yeah 75 what okay so 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 this is these these are the records of my opponents added up so the amount of, of 10 opponents their their opponents win records was 75 wins and only 22 losses. Eddie's first 10 opponents was 84 wins and 68 60. losses. That's a yeah, lot that's of fucking even, losses. That's not even close, bro. That's you don't not even, even close. Know what mine is. Uh, no, now <laughs> I do because it. it's funny. Some people go through the fucking fire. What'd you go through? Yeah, I want to hear it. I'm going to have to look that shit up, man. I'm, I'm 39 <laughs> and 14. <laughs> that's right. Hang on. Max got you. you have Max what? Your Max record you. is 39 and 14. He's got like They're fucking twenty eight. God damn! Wow. Twenty eight KOs at heavyweight. At heavyweight, bro. and of those thirty nine, I have thirty knockouts, thirty finishes. Ah, More Jesus than that, Christ. like you have, you have thirty five. Yeah, almost thirty knockouts. I, I have most all my wins are finishes. Like I only yes. have a few decisions. All right, you have. I want to see have. the. Uh, I want to see the stomach punches again in December. <laughs> you have four decisions. Yeah, four decisions on thirty nine wins. So. Fucking. Okay, so first ten fighters. Let me see here. That's gonna be rough to find. Yeah, and my wife started in two thousand and one, bro. You have to. be It's not on topology. 
Fuck. Yeah. Yo, Sher- speaking Sherlock of which, has it. Sherlock has it all the way down there. Shout out. He started a new website. The guy who runs Tapology, back in the day, I knew this dude, Zach Moore. He was in the amateur programs a lot here in Florida and things like that. But there's fights on my Tapology that I did not fucking have. Like the Brad May one. I never fought that dude ever, and it's on my amateur record that I fucking lost to him. So, Zach I'm, Moore, take that shit down. I'm not going to lie. That's why I don't use Tapology or ship, like Sheer Dog. Zach. It's just like peer-reviewed. That's why I use Wiki. Wiki's actually people rip on Wikipedia all the time. Uh, it's peer reviewed. Like you, you don't really get those mistakes there, but it doesn't have as much in depth information about amateur or early professional fights. So, right. yeah, I feel you on that. Well, so damn. Why does, why does Ben look like I don't want to fight him, but I also want to hug him at the same time? <laughs> Your glass looking empty, man. <laughs> hey, guess what? I'll be there December second in like in uh, Salt Lake City. I'm coming for the hug, brother. I give them up, man. It's all good. I'm oh, coming, man. man. <laughs> uh, hey, Wait, yo, what? that's it's a good moment, man. Wait, Fuck okay, this. let's get back to that. I will search these stats. I'll figure it out. But I'm gonna have to go through like timestamps and shit. Yo, so do you do you want to see when Jones comes back? Do you want to see Stipe? Or do you want to see Aspinall? I think, in my opinion... I think he said he wants to see Stipe fight Jones. I think that's what he said. I think because that's, I think, what they both want. And I yeah. support them. Like I said, I think it's a legacy fight for the two of them. Yeah, It makes I sense. Agree. They both earned it. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, you're clearly a student of the game, Ben. Who, who do you like right now that's coming up? Let's, let's stick with UFC right now. Like, Who do you like coming up? Any weight class... Who's 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 the guys that like excite you right now? Um. Well, who just won his uh, two division champ? Well, uh, you know, Alex. Her, he's 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 pretty cool, man. He's got that yeah. stoic attitude and got that. I don't know. He's got. He kind of makes that mis- that mystery kind of thing that everybody kind of likes. But he fights exciting. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, uh, somebody was breaking him down. They're like, "Yeah, he doesn't. He's not really good at wrestling. He's he's not. You know, doesn't have to be. Doesn't doesn't have his. You know, doesn't put that much submission wins together. You know, and all these. He broke down all these things. It was pretty cool. He's like, but he's a second. He's a two time division champ in the UFC. It's like fighter of the year. But uh, I, I'm just I'm I'm down for guys that um, you know, like to go and put out knockouts and look for good fights like that, man. And obviously, I'm about- hopeful. You were what? talking about Chael talking about Pareto, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Chael's okay. talking, that's right. Chael oh, was the okay. guy I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chael broke it all down like that. And it was pretty funny. And he was like, Chael's like, fighter of the year. I wasn't trying to say names. I was just, you know, putting out prayer out there. Uh, I also uh-huh. appreciate the guys that really, really show a well-rounded game because that's what MMA is all about. And it's very, very, very hard to do, you know, you, you're seeing these breakout guys where guys are really good at striking. Austin Anya, Piero, like straight up kickboxers. They know a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of ground. And I, I'm always backed on this. I know if they're matched up properly, they'll lose. It's it's the thing about the UFC. It's all about matchmaking, and they know how to make their stars. They know how to get put people in the right situations to be successful. Uh, the average fan don't really see it that way. They just want to see people win or whatever. But I know it's all about matchmaking, and when you when you target someone, they need to be a star. They, those people get put into positions to win and look good. But but they also guys. but they also get put into very tough positions, which is what helps make them a star. Because either fighter is in a position to where if they are the one who wins this big matchup, they're gonna blow up big time. I mean, That's these guys. The- it's not like they get easier fights. They get tough fucking fights. And they, they succeed, and then they they level up. That's what it comes down to, matchmaking with the UFC, where they sit there and they go, look, they'll build someone up and give them kind of like gimme fights up until, and not like boxing. It's nothing like that. Like, they'll give you some tests and stuff. They build you up. But once you get to that point where they're going to give you that rough test, they've also built up the other guy where now he could steal your hype. So, like, the Mendez thing, that was fucking nuts for them to do. Connor versus a wrestler on two weeks notice. You have the benefit of him having only two weeks notice to come out here and wrestle Connor. But the whole idea was Connor versus Aldo. 
So now you either have this dude, you get a trilogy with Aldo if Mendez beats Connor. Yeah, de- but Mendez was a foot trend. shorter than Connor McGregor. 100%, but that's the risk they take. Because if Mendez would have beat Connor, now you have a trilogy with Aldo, which is those two fights were fucking good. Really good. So you now stole that hype, lent it to to Chad. That's the whole thing about matchmaking. They won't give you those hard fights until they're sure. Like, it's going to pass off. That's the way I see it, at least. Yeah, I see guys get put into the grinder, and they get put in. You know, they come in with a couple fights, and it's just you see it all the time. They're in the middle of the card going against another killer, and the matchups aren't right. But you see certain guys get picked. They get they get two, three, four fights to get in there, get used to the big lights, get used to the interview, get used to fight week. But they're they're basically put in a position to be successful. Perea, absolutely. Perea was literally that. That's what we were talking about before you hopped on Perea, here. Perea, Sean O'Malley, Pat. Yeah, O'Malley, no, one, O'Malley's probably the one that stands out to me. O'Malley, is, O'Malley stands out to me. I yeah, mean, look, but, he's got the belt. He's a fucking great fighter. But, but he's he was, about to fight he was, Cheeto, he was, and he, he just beat the dude that was literally and beating Aljamain. Was a real it, victory. That's what. Yeah. That's that's the gamble. That's what they market you up to the point of. Defeat the and challenge. Sean and Sean O'Malley beat. showed up. He showed he the fuck up. Now you got to start. That's the gambling process of Mark. The uh, worst thing he's done since being champ is talk about his relationship. <laughs> <laughs> he's been telling us that since beforehand. It's wild shit. He could have just kept that to himself. He should have. <laughs> he definitely should have. <laughs> I'm not sure what yeah. that was all about, and uh, uh, but that that mentality is UFC likes it. Now, yeah. I have to be whatever, but that's just that that type of shit, man. That thrives in that UFC market, man. That's the I guess that's our fan base, unfortunately. Strickland, Strickland. I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing <laughs> Big Ben doesn't share his women. A bunch of sick bastards are our fans. Man, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been with my. We've been together for 21 years. I met her, you know, I met her when I was 20 years old. You know, and been been married for sixteen years, and uh, yeah, man, it's just that that I don't care. Everybody can do what they want with their relationships. I know I'm kind of unique that way, but one thing that I can stand up and be my greatest strength is I genuinely love and care for people. Yeah. My gym has given me that. Where I don't care what your religion is, I don't care how you dress, I don't care your skin color. We're human beings, and we've said this before. When you look at this is around the world, our blood is the same color. I just wish the world would just grasp that. That we're on this planet together, man. We're all like we're all the same thing. I, I, I do agree with you, Ben. I do agree with you, Ben, but Bryce did say we're not on a round world. Yeah. <laughs> well, whether it's a disc or it's a ball, we're all the same shit is Ben's point. <laughs> Bryce sent me some shit the other day. I was like, man, leave that man's <laughs> wife alone, dude. He didn't oh, respond. Uh, Bryce, bro, I, you know what? See, even like a motherfucker, I don't agree with your science or whatever. <laughs> like, that's, I still love you. It's, wear it on your sleeve, bro. Yeah. I would way rather have a motherfucker tell me what he's thinking about shit than just constantly wonder. Yeah, and you can think, and that's the thing. Like, hey, Bryce, that's cool. Roll high five. Like, you can think crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's, cool. That's, that's the beauty of. <laughs> I'm not gonna lose sleep life. tonight about it, bro. Like Bryce said, the fucking Earth is flat, bro. This is gonna fuck kids up. Like this is gonna be terrible for society. I don't give a fuck, bro. Who get? Who cares? He's a sweetheart, great guy. <laughs> hey, and if you're letting your kids listen and learn from Bryce Mitchell YouTube videos, <laughs> then that's on the fucking parents. That's yeah. on the parents. <laughs> Disconnect your Wi-Fi. God damn. I'm trying to find the picture of me and Ben. I was I was a uh, hefty back then. I was a hefty oh, back then. Good. Damn, it's bad. Man. You'll laugh at it, Mike, if I can find it. I'm about to go. I'm about to go do some workouts here in a little yeah. bit after we do yeah. this episode. Man, I'm gonna go put We're some prepared. work in. Yeah. Well, should we wrap? We'll should we wrap right this show? We we got to talk about a couple. We could just Ben, if you're around. Stop for I'm trying to minutes. not work. Cause Bro, that, that you just you. said you're leaving. Y'all didn't want to work. No, I was just making conversation, motherfucker. And you over here are not ready to stop working. You you were one of the ones who didn't want to film on Friday either. That helped Yo, me. I will so pull I, up the text. I got to come on, so good job for that. <laughs> here, look. Mike, we'll talk about this after, okay? You're scaring me, bro. He's going to beat my ass. I think I'm getting on Mike's bad side. Here's, here's what I want to know. 
after after well, you two win on December second, who the fuck do you want? Both of you. I'm I'm really big. I know that's that's like people like to do that. See, I'll give Mike that. I love that he's a, has a fucking no back down, no bullshit, and uh, he's quick to it. When I said I was gonna come take your guys' belt after without hesitation, oh, he's like, yeah. "God damn right, I'll stop!" You know, this makes me laugh because that's you, man, all the time. Like, I'm ready, ready to fight, bro. Yeah, ready, and it's 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 awesome. I, I just Thank I'm you. a big component of I've been through the grind and I've been through so much that I don't need any kind of karma or any kind of bullshit or life trying to teach me any lessons about looking or looking past something. So I have to deal with December 2nd with my fucking 100% everything I got. That's what that dude's getting. I don't give a fuck what they, they – they're calling me the favorite. He's the favorite. No, I don't give a shit about none of that. I have a job, and I have to be very successful December 2nd because now I already know what's going to happen. Something. It's all, it really comes down to my performance too. And who that's going to be, huh? well – Who's it going to be? Well, there's a, there's there happens to be a heavyweight title fight that night. So, you know, uh, the the natural thing would be obviously the winner of that. But I love that response. That was great. That's right. a good response. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. But I literally told, I was like talking to Eddie to his face before the press conference about like the fight after him. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was, Cause that's you. That's, I was that like, cause so dude, nice. you know, like after you, I got to find someone to fight after you. I was like, I, I have a, I was like, I have a plan. We were talking about weight and shit. Cause I was like, cause I plan on using this weight cut to come down and kick your little ass at 175. And then like the hunger that it's going to give me build build up and eat as much as I can while I lift some weight so I can put a little bit of weight on, cut to 185 again and fight Darren fucking Till because it's time that that fight happens. I thought it was going to be you two already. The Eddie, the Eddie kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, right. I didn't like it because I like you both. It's, it's only uh, because he doesn't want to. Darren Till doesn't want to fight me in bare knuckle, which is crazy to me because the, the money's real. The money's there. <laughs> The money is would have been there on the table, but we're going to make it even bigger. We're going to make some fancy rules, and it's going to be a spectacular show. Maybe we, maybe we have Big Ben on that motherfucker. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're going to do boxing? <laughs> you said? We're going to do a new combat sport. Whoa. They keep teasing this Just shit. stay they, tuned, they brother. You'll me. find out about it soon, it. man. All right. The Platinum Pit. Platinum pit, yeah. Alligator and shit. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, it's gonna be great, can we, man. So, can we discuss real quick? What, what the fuck? What the fuck is ever? Am I tripping? Am I tripping no. balls? Or is Jamal Hill getting completely overlooked? Like as far as like from the pan, uh, fan perspective. He's yes. way better than people realize. Like from he's well, he's coming off a major surgery. So injury. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and he's mentally ready to fight always. He's in the battle now to recoup, uh, you know, fix any problems, issues, and get back in the swing of things for sure. I think that's a great fight. And that made me think also uh, of a fight that is scheduled to happen. I want Big Ben's opinion on. So, Tony Ferguson's training with David Goggins. Ooh, yeah. And he's <laughs> fighting Patty Pimblet. So, who do you think out of Tony Ferg and Patty Pimblet? Who do you think is going to win that fight? You guys are so fucking. We're talking about Platinum Pit. Then we get to Jamal Hill. Yeah. Now we're yeah. Yeah. because I want the Pit yeah. in yeah. all these big yeah. fight yeah. conversations. I want the pain? Pit in hey, all of these conversations. Dan is one hundred percent right. You guys are all over the fucking board. <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck, man, McMally? Yeah. Where did you come hey, just Jamal answer Hill those come three from? real quick. The just all of them. Jamal <laughs> Hill come from? Jamal Hill came well, in. Bro, we just watched up. Jamal bro. and then fucking Patty Pimlet and then fucking Well, Pat and one Pitt, of them man. wasn't a question. The second question about Jamal, is Jamal <laughs> being <laughs> overlooked? And, 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 no, he's not being yeah. overlooked. He's coming yeah, back. He no, he's coming get, back. No, he's not, not being not overlooked. He's not being 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 overlooked. He
you got a champ. He, he vacated just like Yuri. Go ahead. Who, that's the first I'll I've heard you. Yuri Alex rematch. That's the first I've heard it. Hey, I'll tell you the Ferguson bit real quick, only because that's been a big topic this week. Yeah. about him teach trick training with David Goggins. Everybody's like, oh, this and this and that. Listen, this is where I'm at. Unfortunately, 11, 12 fight win streak is now on a what? Is it six fight losing streak? Six fight Five. losing streak, yeah. All right, six fight losing streak. Six, six for six times, it's not been going right. I'm like, God bless him. He's doing something totally radically and different, and he should. Because obviously what he's done for the last six fights wasn't fucking working. So I'm like, God bless, do it, because he's Tony Ferguson, and nothing that is normal for everybody else, but what, what, what they think they should do, that shit don't work for Ferguson. He needs to do something crazy and different, because he is crazy and different. And I hope he finds himself because he comes back. Patty Pimble, it'll be in a world of fucking hurt. That's why I asked that fucking question. Because that's how you ask a damn media question, Mac Malley. You ask something that the people can get excited about. And it was a statement talking about the Platinum Pick because it's going to be an exciting fucking event. And everybody's going to want to be a part of it. And Ben gave you a great fucking answer. But is Jamal Hill being overlooked? No, he's not. That's it. There's your answer. You could have just said that, didn't ask your question, Mike. Bro, we were I even did. Talking... All right, well, look, peep this. You want me to just detour this again? If you look at the name Tony's lost to. It's actually pretty fucking insane. It's like... That's a high resume, even if it's six L's in a row. El Kukui, Gigi, baby. Oliveira, Darius, Chandler, Diaz. I want him to beat Patty, to be honest. Bro, I want him to be. I like Patty, but I, yeah, fuck yeah, I want I Tony know. to be back. Tony looked great. Tony Ferg beat Anthony Pettis after Anthony Pettis beat Wonder Boy. And That's MMA math. Tony That's Ferguson MMA math. broke down Anthony Pettis through the fight with just grit and fucking bone toughness. And Anthony Pettis is a he's a beast and super talented athlete. And I Patty Pimblett's a young uh he's a he's um he's got that fan base over there and like he's got so many he's like a little fucking Beatles too. He looks like one of the Beatles members. So like oh. either he's gonna be a fucking superstar, but Jared and look, Jared won last night. Dude, and knocked out Madsen. Whew. Yeah, the Olympian who yep. fucking my friend texted me last minute and was like, oh, well, I'm going to do a three-pick parlay. And fucking Madsen was on it. And I was like, well, that's over. What the fuck? <laughs> fucking, the I should have knew. There. I should have knew when he came out. I mean, after, off of a loss, too, he came back in. But anyways, Patty's been real tough. He showed grit. Ferguson doing this new shit. Um, I mean, I guess it's just a really good fight, but I got, I got Tony pulling it out. And if he doesn't, then, then we got the new Conor McGregor and it's Patty fucking Pimblett. Do you see Patty Pimblett being the new McGregor? No, the fuck I don't. So <laughs> you have a problem with Patty Tony you have a problem with Till and they're both from Liverpool. <laughs> that I figured it out, bro. That's the problem. You hear that fucking accent and now you're like triggered. What is Pat? Hey, what weight does Patty fight at? Maybe 55. maybe Mike drops down and fights Patty. Fifty five. Yeah, he can you get uh, Mike? You can get to fifty five. Dude, I'm barely gonna make seventy five. Bro, <laughs> well, you've been a little lazy. You can get to fifty five. <laughs> All right, Ben, what were you gonna say? <laughs> I just because we like to like you know throw curveballs. I want to know the real question that matters the most is... Let's go. Is Francis Nagano's next fight should be in the platinum pit. I don't know if Damn we can right. afford him after he made $15 million. <laughs> But... <laughs> but... <laughs> and we would have to... You know, the only fight I want to see next for Francis is fucking Deontay Wilder. So we would need at least $50 million to pay them alone. So I don't know if we could make that one happen. We're going to we're gonna have to get back on the phone for that shit. I have a really hot take for you about Francis. And do, you think, do you guys think that's going to be his next fight in some fashion? Or I'd like to see Francis fight you in bare knuckle. Yeah. That'd be pretty ugly. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with doing boxing gloves for, for both our sakes. <laughs> 
Hey, hey, how about this? Boxing rules, listen, boxing rules, four ounce gloves, you and Francis. I mean, nice. that's MMA, you know, that's, so no. it helps save our hands. No, no. Four yeah. ounces and bare knuckle is kind of, you know. Just boxing rules. Just boxing rules, four yeah. ounce gloves. It's not that's the same how Francis shit. plays MMA anyways, like <laughs> boxing rules. So, you know, he might throw a that's kick incredible. or two. Yeah, he did do some takedowns in his last UFC fight, but for the most part, he likes to go throw those hands. So that's why he obviously was a natural fit to go into boxing. I mean, speaking of that, which is crazy, his last UFC fight was Serial Gone and mm-hmm. um, fucking grappled him for three rounds or something? Or, yeah, or all five me. rounds? Did it go all five rounds? I don't remember. But John no, just, just like comes out and goes, oh, mounted guillotine. Put my nuts on yep. your chest. Crazy. But John knows how to finish. He's got the he's got the j- full jujitsu aspect to it. Frank, you it know, jujitsu is not come e- that fight. Yeah, jujitsu don't come easy. Jujitsu mm. to actually learn how to put submission on somebody that's fighting for their life, you got to put some time into it. John obviously has all aspects of it. Francis did pick up some wrestling, but you just you just don't learn you know jujitsu. No. And he, he's done some fucking big man submissions in the past, but I mean... Have you ever grappled Gordon Ryan? I have not. Oh, I just figured because... We didn't Mike Perry had fucking grappled, grappled Gordon fucking Ramsay everybody. Once. Yeah, I haven't really been involved with the, the, the grappling circuit or anything, so... We need come, to get that set up. I'd love to watch that. He's thing. talented, man. That guy, uh... Yeah, kind of doing his fucking thing. Do you have a jujitsu belt? Are you a colored belt in any in jujitsu at all? I'm I'm proclaimed black with the no gi on, you know, from 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 our trainers and instructors and stuff. But actual with gi jujitsu on, I'm supposed to get my brown belt. I just you probably couldn't even stuff. find a gi that fit. I can <laughs> wear a gi. <laughs> I get you. That's a big yeah. ass gi, dude. Hey, take your gi off and cover up that side of the audience. <laughs> uh, it would probably be a gee. good size blanket for you, yeah. Yeah, I could hey, fucking boy. make three geese out of a sleeve. I'll say this: we got to make special shirts for Ben. Ben's like, "Hey, man, I need another shirt." I'm like, "Fuck!" I'm like, "Hey, look, look, look at that fucking shirt with Mike what? licking his fucking hand." That, that shit is so X. great, Mike. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah man, let's go, man. I love that, bro. Thank you. I need another shirt. And I'm like, I hit my I hit the fucking production crew and I'm like, I need a fucking three, four X and a fucking for Ben. That's it. We don't make those I sizes. Need, I'm like, just for Ben. Send it to him. I need a Ben shirt. Do you have any shirts, yeah, Ben, that I can a, buy on we need social a fucking media? Ben shirt like that. I'll too. bring you I'm gonna bring you one. I got oh fuck. This is my normal no, no, I don't like that one. But I got some. I, I, you I don't have a line, link. I, I could order one. one. No, I'll bring you one. I'll bring you one to December second, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we're What's gonna. We're oh gonna man, that'd be great. I wear XL, believe it or not. All right, you big thick motherfucker. I am thick. If I wear a fucking large, that shit will be tight as fuck all the time. So yes, at thick. least after hey, one ben, wash, it's it's real tight, Ben, but it's real long on him. <laughs> it's just Take your hat off. Knee. It's down to his knees. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Dude, it's gonna be great to document Mike Perry devolving like into fight week as he gets more and more aggressive getting ready for a fight. I can already feel it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean Bags, you said something about we were gonna skip next week or something? But then we're yeah. gonna pick up fight week. I mean, whatever, man. We'll talk about that. But yeah. Hey, were you uh? Did you dress up for Halloween, Ben? With the family? I didn't, I didn't this year. My I dressed up my kids. Um, I've done stuff in the past. I love Halloween too. My birthday's October seventeenth, so I'm an October guy. Just happy belated, bro. Yeah, yeah thank you. Just a crazy Three, year. Uh, uh, Thirty thirty one again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 31 days when he was nine hey, yeah. in 2001. Look, me, hey, look, me and Ben are both 31. <laughs> hey, Ben, doesn't he look like Eddie Alvarez? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all, dude. 
Dude, see, look, he's already seeing his enemy faces on people know, around him. He's like, he's like, bro, I'm going to fucking smash your fucking face. You look like Eddie. Look I'm fine. in his corner. I'm in his corner December 2nd. He's, gonna he's ready to fight you, bro. Room. Yeah, this you're my warm-up. You're going to be in the corner? <laughs> hey, here's the problem. Yes. I'm 220, buddy, so if I'm your warm-up, you may have a problem before you go in there with Eddie. Oh, Christ. No, don't, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> you, you should I'll hit wind. you so I hey you might want to spar me cuz I'll hit you so fucking hard you'll grow some hair back. Yeah. Dude. Man. <laughs> so I'm going to put pressure on myself. I'm going out to actually I need a great performance because by doing so I'm 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 going to push myself to be Panda's new big man model and uh, maybe maybe I can get Panda make me a, make me a rock That's right. Star. There we go. Hey, I'd and buy then the me catalog. and Ben are both flying. Me and Ben are flying to Turkey and getting fucking hair transplants. We're gonna come back with fucking mullets after we go to Turkey. Dude, there was like one social media post that sounds good viral talk about yeah. Turkey hair place like doing hair transplants. Now everyone wants to go to Turkey for that. Is that the same one you saw? Anyway, yo, yeah, ben. I'm just saying. I if like, ben I like wins, I like it. I'm I'm good. I'm no, nah, 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 nah. Ronaldo Jacare. Ronaldo Souza had did like a hair transplant. Um, I think Costa, it was Conor yeah. McGregor or somebody was talking shit. It was a 50 Cent who was talking shit about Floyd Mayweather getting hair off his ass or balls and put on his face his for beard. his beard. Yeah, because he couldn't grow a beard. <laughs> Dude, 50 Cent still to this day, like the $50,000 if you read one page of Harry Potter is still like all time. All time, bro. Fuck the bucket of ice. Fuck, yeah, 100%. <laughs> we need a new challenge. We got to do a TikTok dance together or some shit. Yeah. Actually, the uh, the challenge we did is the new challenge, but no one else is doing it. They said, they said Dana White slap off or fucking the body shot challenge is bigger than the fucking Dana White slap competition. I gotta no one's it doing on. it, though. It's because no one wants to... It's because no, people I don't get, get it. I want to see Mike and Ben do a fucking dance off challenge together. <sighs> you know, we can do the, the tick, dance TikTok on Fight the, Week. The, we'll the, have to come up with No, December 2nd, man. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, a dance off challenge. Maybe like it? November 29th. <laughs> December 2nd. December 2nd, buddy. He's telling you the day, the day of the fight. Fuck it. Buddy. Let's go. Mike, Mike just Not got just on. the day of the fight. Mike you just have to accomplish something, and then the challenge begins. All right. We I, both have to win, and then... <laughs> that'll be easy as long as, you know, I'm sure the drinks will be flowing by that time. I'll be fucking <laughs> celebrating. I'll be partying. Man. All right, here, here's... Uh, let me drop this on you before I go take a piss and grab two more Bud Lights. And this goes for each one of you. Would you rather take mushrooms... And go to a PTA meeting with Tony Ferguson at your own child's school, or go to a haunted house and take PCP with Yuri Prohaska. Like a like a haunted house Halloween. The Tony through. Ferguson but thing. Psychedelics are involved with both here. <laughs> you were you what? They're both terrible. Think of the implications. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you're. Maybe catching a I said the Tony Ferguson now. thing, but I saw this girl ask this on Instagram today. She was like, let me ask you a question. She was like, would you rather have $5 million or get oh, cancer? <laughs> That's what that. you just fucking I've asked. Seen I've seen it. Yeah, that was going around. She didn't even. No, what, what kind I of cancer Mine actually it? has implications. That, what kind that of cancer chick doesn't get the point. My point is, do you want to go to a PTA meeting with a bunch of other Karens, high on mushrooms with Tony Ferguson, that or one. go to a fucking... Nah, bro, I, I'm going to the fucking haunted house with Yuri on PCP. 100%. I'm just not going to hit anyone myself. What about you guys? I, I don't like to it's get wet. That's a question, you guys. Um, I'm choosing what, the mushrooms what? over the PCP. Word. I'm choosing Word. Tony Ferguson because he's about to smash Patty. Uh, Yuri just <laughs> lost. So, 
We leave losers to themselves. I've been, on mush- I've been on mushrooms for the last two hours, so I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with mushrooms. Yeah. yeah, I didn't go how I thought it would. Anyway, I'm sorry I ruined it, Mac. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> no, it's all good, bro. All right, yo. Well. One time, Mac Malley, I was at the. Um, I went to Karate Combat to see Erickson Samuel. And yeah. uh, I went to the hotel, and they wanted to, like, film shit because Erickson Samuel's always posting. He posts some pretty good, like, uh, content, just regular simple videos and shit. So I go to the hotel, Karate Combat, to see him, meet him, say hi, and come up with an idea. Here comes uh, Joe Dirt. Um, and uh, what... These guys, Mac Malley was there, and they're all filming this shit, and they're, like, trying to get us to come up with these ideas, and they're like, oh, how about Mike does this, and Erickson just fucking falls down, and I'm like, bro, don't ever go down for these motherfuckers, bro. You a fighter, you gotta believe that no one can fucking beat you, and, like, you gotta hold that mentality forever. You never go down. Fuck a movie. We real fighters. So then, I'm like, I got an idea for the video. Let's just fucking bare knuckle body fight and you can kick and I'll punch and you can punch and we're just going to I'm going to fucking hit you in the body and you're going to hit me in the body and the arms and shit don't get hurt. So we just fought for like three minutes bare knuckle body fighting in the back at karate combat. I was like, there's your fucking video trying to get us to act. We're terrible actors. Mike, this is why you and me get along, bro. So, like, the whole time they're thinking of those ideas, right? Like, how do we make this a skit? I'm like, what do you what con, what what do you mean? Content ideas? I was like, it's right there. It's standing right there. His name is Mike Perry. It's right there. <laughs> just let him do whatever. Like, let him yeah. fucking talk to him. That's it. And then, of course, he's not kidding, Ben. Literally, they're like, mm, yeah, it sounds kind of like maybe we just you want to like spar. And then they just go like Kyokushin bare knuckle on each other's bodies and it's supposed to be like a 20 second clip and i'm like they're gonna go for like three and a half minutes dude they go (laughs) fucking at it and i'm like this is what i'm talking about don't overthink it you have mike perry right there i'm on your side bro there you go 100 percent. one of our really you ever seen karate combat ben i actually have been watching the van just the clips um it's been blowing up you know i've been seeing a lot of clips lately so i haven't actually sat down and watch an event yet but uh it seems like it's a lot of fun and it looks like it's blown up it's fun man it's definitely a different vibe i gotta push beer and uncle right now so i'm 100 percent. no yeah yeah no for sure i mean combat in general just push push you man because you're the biggest thing if there's anyone uh that you want to give shouts to or um you know just show show uh appreciation for Five hour, is that five hour Mid, energy? Oh, Mid forty five, BKFC certified sponsor. And the only reason I'm doing that because I pulled it out of my bag. The guy, the owner, was there and he was really at the press conference, and he was really nice. What is it like? Bucked five up. Hours? The owners are bucked up. We're gonna be fighting in their arena. Uh, they sponsor the Maverick Center, so um, I'm happy. You know what I mean? It's really cool to see BKFC bringing some of these good sponsors. Uh, that just means that. People are getting behind us. They're getting behind the sport, and it's important to give them a shout out because we need them too. So, uh, like you said, combat sports in general. That's why I support karate combat. I gotta, I gotta push bare knuckle. But combat sports, more of it into the world, getting more fans watching combat sports in general. It's a good thing for all of us, man. It's just really cool time to be alive because you know it wasn't like this twenty years ago, thirty years ago. It's never been what it is right now. It's it's, it's pretty amazing for guys like me and Platinum. You know, we're we were born different from everybody else, let's be honest. And we have a place <laughs> to, you know, be ourselves. Otherwise, man, it might have been prison for me or something worse. I don't know. So I'm very thankful that you know, martial arts found me and uh, humbled me and uh, get to live a little bit more peaceful. I live- nah, man, you're such a great guy, man. It was it yeah. was not ever gonna be prison, man. You're such a great guy. Shout out to you, Ben, man. I really appreciate yeah. your thought process on all these things, and and shout out to first round management as well for fucking Hell linking yeah. us first together, round, they're, man. They're the, so. they're the best, absolutely. Um, I we handed myself over to them. So yeah, thank you for calling them out, Market Cipher. 
K5 pandas. Let's go. <gasps> the Shout first out. dude I ever Black took a fucking the UFC pit. picture with. Let's go. Hey, Ben. Let's go. If anybody drops out of your corner, just holler at me because I just got approved for uh, for uh, Utah. I can now corner anybody in Utah. If I get to have four corners, sure. I got you. Go. You do get four corners. He does. He's a main event, but they're usually dicks. Uh, they only give you three. Yeah. And I don't. Th- I think Abe will fight you for the for the third spot. So. Oh, it's Abe. Oh, he's yeah. My, I'm definitely he's my rabbit corner. foot, man. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> Abe. Fuck Abe. I'm, t- I'm going to text Abe right now and tell him sorry, brother. <laughs> you might fight you for it. I'm kidding. As long as as long as Abe wears the 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 can pie hat, we good. But man, hey, I can't wait to see you fight again, December second. Another win. The fucking sky is a limit for you boys. Amen. Oh well, yeah, that's the plan. Man, it's going to you, Go out yeah. here and get it done, man. Put on a show. Well, yeah, and I'm coming in for that uh for that hug that I told you earlier. After. Right on, dude. Coming in for the hug. Announcing nice. a hug is just dap him up and just go for it. Bro. Nah, bro, I'm coming in for the <laughs> no, big. No, man, you gotta just make it. Nah. It's gonna be weird because you'd be like, "Hey, Ben, I don't give a what? fuck. I don't bro. give a fuck if it's weird or not. Nah, you think I'm being weird? weird. I'm you think taking being a video weird? of it. I'm gonna be Yo, recording I'm, I'm, that hug. I'm, I'm gonna way be, past make it awkward being as shit. Man. About make being it weird, awkward man. as shit. Get in there. I'm way past that shit. Get in there. That's right. It won't. It can't be a normal hug. <laughs> like do all hips, just all hips into it. No, Get your no, titty no. out my chin. Get your yeah. titty out my chin. Hang yeah. on, hang on. I'm married with three kids. Ben's fucking married. I'm talking about just a a man hug. That's it. A couple dudes hugging. Couple I dudes think hugging I think no there's a lot of married men with families that love hugging dudes. So you got to be careful with that. <laughs> is there? Is that a, is that a big thing? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think they all like to drink Bud Light. I'm not one of them. Fuck I'm not one of them. Mac, maybe. Oh, that's another thing. People are giving the UFC shit about the Bud Light, about that sponsorship deal. I'm like, that's a win for the normal folk. Why? Because Bud Light had to give up on their bullshit. They were trying to throw it on the population's throat, and they... Bought into the UFC. What is it? It kind of says something. You know what I mean? So That's I a like, great way to look at it. It's you know, a like, win. We're activists now. No, we like dudes beating the shit out of each other in cages. Actually, though, for real, no, we always liked that on. before. But we are kind of activists. Hang on, hang on, Mac. You may hold not on be, now because Bud Light is always like dudes beating the shit out of each other. I'm just saying. I mean, if you think about it, yeah. fucked up. But Big Ben, what did you think? Hey, the the picture from this weekend, Trump, Kid Rock, Tucker Carlson, and uh, Dana. How good was that? That's the, it's like the. (laughs) You need that picture in your office now. You need that picture behind you there, Josh. Dude, I will print that fucking picture out and put it right behind me. I swear to God. With a stadium of people cheering. Yeah. Yep. So I That'd went to, i tell you this, cool. Ben, I went to um, Pereira and uh, Izzy in Miami. And that was the first one that I remember Trump, like, being at. And Trump came in, and it was uh, it was also uh, Masvidal and Gilbert Burns. And I'm telling you, and Holland fought on the card. And Trump came in with fucking Dana, and the, the absolute, the, the whole arena erupted. It was like, it was like so-so on the undercard, right? Trump comes in, the whole place erupts. Yeah, okay? that's a right-wing crowd. Oh, it was crazy. In Miami, in downtown Miami, which is Democratic as Democratic gets. It just is. So, whole, whole place erupts. Kevin Holland wins, jumps over the cage, shaking hands with Trump. You know, Masvidal. I mean, all of them did. And it's, it's hilarious now because you see it now, right? Like, this past weekend, they all came in together. And everybody goes absolutely fucking ape shit over it. Trump's the man, bro. He's the man. And you throw in fucking Kid Rock? Man, that's the man. Kid Rock got caught with that Bud Light 
before the sponsorship deal. Right? Yeah. And here I am just slamming <laughs> slamming Bud Lights on this podcast. Dude, when I was like when, when I was like 18 years old, I was I was cuz I grew up in Nashville. I was like 18, man. And we'd always be at this little shitty strip club and that Nashville's got terrible strip clubs. We'd be there and Kid Rock would always come in. And it was always the highlight of the night, but he wasn't nearly as like he wasn't Kid Rock at the time, you know. But he always came in and and partied and man, there's there's just nobody like Kid Rock. <laughs> mm. I'm from Wisconsin, so Bud Light's out. Yep. So is Mac. Mac, Mac is now out. <laughs> <He's> out. <laughs> <laughs> hey Ben, love you, brother. I will see you in December. Looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that massive hug that has all this build up now. <laughs> choke his ass out. Just choke his ass out. Not arm a choke. Arm. Remember it's arm, a arm triangle. Nope, not going to be that either. It's going to be a hug. hug, It's going to be a hug. Yeah. A bear hug. I'm excited. A Ben hug. Why y'all trying to fuck with me? You tried to to fuck me. You you literally, you gassed yourself up. You get yourself in situations. Now we're applauding it. Don't get mad at us. It's a fucking hug, hug, bro. I'm not trying to get choked out by Ben Rothwell. Not on my fucking bucket list. It's on mine. It's in the red cell. Word. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Fucking anything. Thank you, guys. It was fun, man, and uh, looking forward to December 2nd. Looking forward to watching that man work as well, so we're going to go out and put on a fucking show. Thank you so yeah. much, man. Shout out to the fans, man. Thank you guys for watching this next episode of Overdogs Podcast, Kempai Pandas, Kempai Media, Mac Malley, Ice Bags, Platinum Mike Perry, man. This has been episode 13. Clip that shit. Thank you guys, man. Thank you, grandmother.